Welcome to the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff, where it's a glorious day in the uh, in the capital as we look ahead to uh, a full day's uh, rugby entertainment here. And I suppose you could call it a Super Saturday because today is uh, the day for the National uh, League clubs. And uh, coming up shortly, we will have the National Shield final between Kremlin and Tonna to be followed by the National Bowl final, and that's being contested between Bryn Kethin and Sanharan, and finally the National Plate final between Trioki and Penasta. So the crowds are in for the opening match, the Shield final, Tonna and Crumlin, and I can tell you when the uh, teams went in from their warm-ups, there was a loud roar from the uh, Tonna crowd, not to be outdone by the Crumlin contingent. I, not sure how many busloads there are, but I, yeah, I think there probably are some, uh, well, between them, some 18 busloads uh, have travelled from their respective villages, of course, where Tonna and Kremlin rugby clubs are at the heart of everything that's good about the respective villages and have certainly been uh, hubs uh, during the recent uh, COVID pandemic and all power to their elbow. And now they have their day here in the sun as we await the teams. So let's have a look at the respective lineups. It's an East versus West clash, and what better could we hope for on a sunny day like this than an East-West clash? Kremlin, Gavin Spencer, Tyler Madden-Smith, Daniel Lewis, Gavin Hipkiss and Kerrig Wilson at lock forward. Kyle Walton, Kian Chess and Rhys Davis. Halfbacks, Steele Jones, Ethan Chess. Dylan Foxwell on the wing, on the left wing, Tyler Lewis on the right. Cole Jones and Scott Barnes at centre, and Joel Whitcomb at fullback and eagerly awaiting their opportunity to come off the bench. They are the impact players. Lee Talbot, Reese Hipkiss, Dean Ackerman, Jordan Hughes, Gavin Davis, Dylan Musto, Corey Strickland and Morgan Wilson. They are the finishers as they are known in Kremlin. And Tonna, let's have a look at uh, their team. Their lineup: Josh Jones, Kieran Cole, Johnny Thomas, Andrew Millard, and Josh Hughes in the boiler house. Craig Mitchell, that's a familiar name probably for any number of uh, rugby followers, a former Wales international. Don Morris is at seven, and they're led by Callum McFay at number eight. Lloyd Evans and Jason Evans are the halfbacks. On the left wing is Chris Miller. Josh James is wearing 14. Nicky Fisher and Josh Ebbett at centre, and Morgan Kemmers is at fullback. And likewise. Their replacements on the bench uh, to make an impact, Steve Wolfe, Tom Parry, Chris Partin, Luke Payne, Adam Gubb, Owen Nesbitt, Ben Thomas and Gavin Richards. So there we are, the stage is set for the Shield final. And I'm joined uh, in commentary for the very first time making his debut a very nervous uh, Adam Taylor, although I have to say he works for the Welsh Rugby Union and he's the most relaxed I've seen him all week. Welcome, Adam. Cheers, Wayne. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a hell of a week, to say the least, but uh, it's nice to actually watch a bit of rugby rather than uh, ferrying people around and <laughs> taking everyone to their seats. So uh, it's nice to, uh, to be sat to be with yourself today. But it is the culmination of uh, a year long, really, um, work behind the scenes and uh, the background of covid of course and it's it's well, i'm not saying it's a miracle but it's a, a challenge it's been a challenge and certainly the wru to be congratulated for putting on this festival of rugby the road to principality this week oh i'd say uh, i think challenge is probably the right word to be fair there it's uh, logistically i think with over 30 finals over across the week the amount of work that goes in i mean th th there's too many people to to, to thank for, for what has been done i mean carl scales our, our apprentice manager and Anthony palmer and their team we couldn't have done it without them as well as plenty of others and it's um like you say you, you can see the players coming out and it's just a fantastic week for everyone involved oh, what a day for these mascots and it's great to see the mascots for kremlin and the two from tonner line up alongside one another bearing that shield out on the field and all the games have been played in in fine spirit uh, uh, during the week and it's great to see these two teams tremendous rivalry obviously east versus west but there that shot there encapsulated everything that's good about rugby and what i've seen this week yeah couldn't agree more when we had uh, the, the when the teams come in earlier on they were uh, they were congregating around the tunnel together talking to each other um it, it was nice and calm it was uh, it was a great atmosphere and like you say that's what the uh, that's what the day is all about So Tonner will kick off uh, from right to left and they're in the red uh, shirts and the black shorts and the wood. 
But the referee, Joseph Rees, leads uh, the officiating panel of Rees Melacretny and uh, Thomas Carew, supported by Mark Jones as well on the sideline. So here we go then for the opening match of the national finals day. It's Kremlin against Tonna for the national shield final. And the crowd already in fine voice getting behind their teams as uh, Kremlin through their lock forward bundled in to touch. That's Gavin Hipkiss. He can play any position from four to eight. Yeah, good tackle by Craig Mitchell, I think, for both teams. You want to get your hands on the ball, you want to make that first tackle, you just want to get right into it now. Yeah, Craig Mitchell, uh, former Wales prop forward, much leaner Craig Mitchell these plays these days, playing at flank forward and giving back to the club that gave him so much in his formative years. So Tonna on the front foot, and they'll get the first opportunity at points in this National Shield final. I wonder, is it too far? We'll see. I think the... Uh, the command went out that uh, Josh James would uh, have a crack at this one. Josh James has been the main kicker for Tonna this season. He's got a try against uh, Ferndale in the semi-finals and two versus Hollybush in the quarters. Now ah, they've, they've sought over. Now he's got 28 points versus Hollybush in the quarters and two tries and nine conversions in that 28 point uh, total so here then is josh james from uh, center field right footed and opens the scoring in the national shield final for tonner and they lead kremlin by three points to nil yeah nice no strike from him um that'll be one to say he scored the first points in the first ever shield final so he'll uh, be one to dine out on for a number of years i imagine yeah, I should think so. Good strike from the uh, right winger. And uh, Kremlin lead then. Three points. Uh, Tonna lead rather. Three points to nil. So that'll settle the nerves. If there were any, I'm sure Craig Mitchell will have had uh, a little word of encouragement in the dressing rooms because he's been here before. So Kremlin, let's see what they can do with ball in hand. Run the ball back, having a quick look to see what's uh, on offer. Options left and right here. Change of direction from uh, Steele Jones, the scrum half. Sending it out, that's the captain, Rhys Davis. Both teams are led by their respective number eight forwards. Rhys Davis for Kremlin and Callum McFay for Tonner. On the charge, Tyler Madden-Smith can play at uh, hooker or at uh, flank forward. So over the Tonner 10-metre line. Cole Jones is there at inside centre, helping out. This is Ethan Chess. Man of the match for Kremlin in the semi-final against Pontedawe. Oh, excellent pass. One more pass might do it. Couldn't quite free his hands to get the ball away. But Kremlin on the front foot here. Looking for the opening try of the match as uh, Tyler Lewis takes the ball back into contact. Out again. The breakthrough from uh, Scott Barnes. He's got his colleague in centre, Cole Jones, alongside him. Now then, Kremlin have the width of the field here. Turning one way, then the other. That's Ethan Chess, 6-6. Six, six, seven meters out the offload from uh, Rhys Davis plenty of runners offering themselves out wide on the left but it comes back on the narrow side well taken by Ethan Chess at outside half five meters short then of the Tonna try line and still Kremlin come again using the big forwards the tackle was good though from Jason Evans the Tonna outside half and they look to counter this is dangerous, this is risky play from Tonna. Out to J uh, Josh James. But the referee calls him back. A great passage of play there from Kremlin, Adam, and uh, 
Equally good defence from Tonner. Uh, really impressive from both. I was impressed by the, the patience from uh, from Crumlin there. They didn't panic, they took their time, went through a number of phases, a couple of nice breaks, and equally as good defence from Tonner. So the first scrum of the match. Now we learn more about the respective uh, forward pa packs after this scrum, packing down on the tight head for Crumlin. That's uh, big Dan Lewis. He's up against uh, the equally physical Josh Jones. It's all about technique in the scrum. As a front row forward uh, win, I, I can tell you now they'll uh, they'll be looking forward to this, the very first one. Set the stall out early and uh, and get ready for the rest of the day. Ah, you can see them flexing the muscles and puffing the chest. Yeah, a couple of big boys down there as well, so I bet they're all uh, ready for this. Certainly are. Crumlin, solid as a rock. And here comes the centre, Cole Jones. On the Tonner five metre line, out into the safe hands of the Ethan Chess. Quick ball this time, this is better. The scrum half for Steele Jones, almost to the try line, a metre short. Tonner, the defence is good at the moment. In goes Craig Mitchell, looking to turn the ball over. May well have done enough. A Tonner will get the penalty. That was an outstanding counter up by Craig Mitchell there, absolutely smashed through. Well, that's the value of Craig Mitchell, isn't it? 15 cap for Wales. He may be 35 years of age now, but uh, still remembers the glory days. It looks like he's in the shape of his life as well, Wynn, so I bet uh, he's a great person to have on your team. He certainly is. He represented Tonna at youth level and all the way up to the highest stage of all and uh, the Rugby World Cup of 2011 and, and uh, Warren Gatland. Shoulder to shoulder, both outside halves, and Jason Evans wins that uh, contest. Out the back door it goes. Uh, great idea, execution not quite there, but under pressure. Yeah, again, more great defence from Tonner. Good steal, outside half and outside half. We don't see that every week, but um, credit to Tonner. They're looking like they want to run it from all over the pitch as well, so a couple of times they've, uh, they've gained position. They're, uh, they're looking to go wide and use it. Stamina might be the key, and we've seen this week already uh, players towards the end of the match they came out of course all guns blazing but this this ground it uh, takes it out of you doesn't it it saps the energy from the legs and it's a point worth making I think uh, about Reese Cleverly and his team of groundsmen that they've done this fantastic job this week this probably is about what the 25th match probably to be played in the last week or so yeah Lee Reese Tom the team they've been outstanding um, I've said to Reese the pitch looked a bit hard at times but uh, I'll, I'll give him a bit of credit for that anyway but he's uh, <laughs> They've done well. What did he say? What do you know about it? <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, it's a, a great playing surface. Uh, probably the best that the, these men have played on. And that's no disrespect to the groundsmen at Crumlin and Tonna, I can assure you. They're so proud of their playing surfaces and the facilities also at the respective clubs. Nice little uh, 100 run. Steel Jones. Finds Kian Chess in close support. The uh, head banded number seven for Crumlin. Celebrated his birthday yesterday, although so these celebrations would have been muted, I would suggest, knowing that uh, he had a big game, the biggest game of his life uh, here at the biggest stage ever today. I'm sure they'll more than make up for it tonight, Win. <laughs> Carrick Wilson. The average age of the uh, Kremlin uh, forwards, not that they would wish to be reminded of it perhaps, but it's about 31 years of age. Um, behind the scrum, it's about 23, so they'll be expected to do the running, I suppose. That's always the way. It's a big old track, like you mentioned earlier, so uh, age might catch up with a couple of these Kremlin forwards. Uh, it's a, a run here down the uh, narrow side from uh, Tyler Lewis. He's the top try scorer for... Crumlin this year, 20 tries in seven games. That was a lovely break from Lewis. Showed a nice turn of pace. Cut back inside. Unlucky with the offload. So the referee's assistant comes in. Just have a quick word. And some uh, attention needed for the uh, Tonner fullback, Morgan Chemist. And... Uh, 
Tonner certainly don't want to lose his services. Closing in on uh, 400 points for the season. I was informed he scored around 48 or 49 points in a game this season as well. So he's uh, he's definitely one to keep an eye on today. That's right. Uh, Pantafunon wouldn't wish to be reminded of that, I don't think. Uh, but there we are. Such are the fortunes of uh, clubs in the minor leagues, of course. And uh, the clubs that are suffering at the moment, well, we can just look here at Kremlin and Tonna. They've had their issues in the past, but they've regrouped. And uh, and now, of course, they, they have uh, uh, solid performer, solid support uh, at the respective clubs and uh, youth sections as well. Yeah, definitely. I think COVID has affected all clubs in different manners of ways. And like you say, I think th these two clubs are, are just a great advert to see what uh, what can be done and, and what is on offer for uh, for other teams within the national leagues. Yeah, we're looking at uh, Tony and uh, 135 years uh, of history. They head the division and they're looking for a league and a shield double. They're down there in uh, Division 3 West Central C and Crumlin in Division 3 East C. So heavy strapping being applied to uh, Morgan Chemis, his right leg. Let's hope it's not too tight. He doesn't look too comfortable there, so we might be one to keep an eye on. So this scrum some 15 metres in from touch, midway between the Tonner 10 metre line and 22. And Lloyd Evans to feed. Pressure, the weight coming through, but it's uh, picked up by Callum McFay, the captain. The support from the forward, slow in arriving. Into the wide open spaces, Jason Evans has spotted a gap. Oh, excellent kick. Takes play up to the Kremlin 22. And that's a relieving kick from the Tonner outside half. Yeah, it was good pressure from the... The Kremlin tight did there. Angle might not have been uh, at the correct correct way, but still great pressure. But excellent kick from uh, from Tonner's outside half. So Kremlin back on their own 22 in the sun on the far side of the field, guarding the back of the line out there for uh, Tonner and aiding abetting the jumper was Josh Hughes. Kremlin look to hold up the ball carrier, but it's there for Jason Evans. Mitchell asking questions of the Kremlin defence, and uh, this is Andrew Millard, the lock forward. Evans on his heels, that's uh, Nicky Fisher. At the inside centre, good recycling. As Dom Morris thought he'd spotted uh, a chink of light around the fringes. And he pushes Kremlin back another meter or so. Great tackle in midfield. That tackle had to be done because uh, Tonner were building up ahead of steam. Yeah, there were numbers there that was definitely needed. Safely back into the in-goal area where Ethan Chess sends it away, doesn't find touch. Straight into the arms of Josh James. Neat little step. Excellent work here by the fullback. Despite that uh, injury a minute or two ago, Morgan came as spotting that perhaps there was an opportunity to create the extra man. Miller goes to ground and sets it up again. Crumley not committing men at the breakdown. Mitchell with the offload uh, to Millard. And Tonner build again, but this time it's a turnover and it's uh, claimed by the hooker. Tyler Martin Smith. Yeah, again, both defences have been excellent in these early stages of the game. And again, it's been impressive to see the build-up by both teams, but uh, defences coming out on top so far, Win. Yeah, two well-matched sides. And with a flank forward that uh, won that on key and chess because Tyler Madden Smith is down receiving treatment two players with headbands so let's congratulate uh, Kian chess scored one of his sides nine tries against Pontedawe again like you mentioned earlier you can see there's uh, a couple of 
bigger swigs from the water bottles now <laughs> early on already. So uh, the biggest one was taken by, on by the referee. Exactly. Though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's always a good sign as well. <laughs> I think the weather play a huge factor there. It's a uh, nice bright day. It's quite quite breezy down pitch side, but um, conditions being like this, it's uh, it's only going to get tougher. Colin McVeigh, the Tonga captain, marshalling the uh, the touchline here. Kremlin find a good touch just inside their own half. Just the one score then. That uh, penalty from uh, Josh James taking Tonner into a three-point lead. It's a nice position to attack here, just inside their own half. Yeah, just looking at the formation behind and uh, Kian Chess, the opposite flanker, is uh, standing way back ready for... Great hit by Sony might come that. his way. Great hit, as you say. The Tonner still have it. Ricky Fisher couldn't quite uh, gather, so he uh, he leaves it for, uh, for one of his colleagues. That was an outstanding tackle by Chess. He's been uh, impressive early on, and a lot has gone through him for Kremlin, and I imagine he's their, uh, their linchpin, but you can see why he's had a, a very good start of the game. Tyler Madden Smith is slowly making his way to this lineout. Received uh, some attention a minute or so ago down uh, just beneath us here in the grandstand. A pat on the back from uh, Kian Chess. A little encouragement perhaps as well. Last man down for Kremlin. That's the captain. Rhys Davis has crossed uh, 150 games this season for Kremlin. Under pressure. Kremlin managed to move it quickly into midfield, uh, taken up by uh, Cole the Mole Jones. That's what they call him. That was a huge shot there. He was unlucky not to keep on to the ball. Yeah, but I'm looking towards the far side, and uh, Madden Smith is down on his haunches. He did his level best to, to uh, run that injury off as he uh, made his way from this touchline to the far touchline for, for the scrum. But he's clearly in uh, in some discomfort at the moment. Reese Davis has gone over to uh, check on his welfare. And speaking of welfare, that's another aspect of the play this week. And we've noticed, you know, that uh, welfare is paramount. And the medics, they go through all the protocols. And uh, an injury which appears to be relatively serious, well, it's, it's never as bad as it looks. Yeah, again, again, testament to the, the medical teams and the medical staff that are on uh, on duty during the whole week. They've been outstanding, and again, they, they can't do enough for these players. I mean, we've, we've had one or two knocks, as you're, as you're obviously well aware, win here and there, but uh, again, welfare is obviously paramount to these clubs, but the uh, the people we've got looking after them are, uh, are second to none. And what has impressed as well, in the lower echelons of the junior sections, the referee, they've been uh, equally as... Uh, um, as diligent, perhaps I should say, on high tackles and and the like. Uh, despite the fact that they don't look to be serious, it's just a, a grab, perhaps round round the shoulder or what have you. But the warning has gone out each and every time. Kremlin stepping out to the tackle. That's Steel Jones, still moving forward, rolls and makes the ball available. And it's the ever-present Kian Chess at number seven, who's there first, out from Ethan Chess. A solid tackle. And it's the hooker, Madden Smith, who's, who's down. He was the on the receiving end of that yeah. tackle. A couple of big hits on the outside, both outside halves today. It's uh, it's a rarity, really. I know, I know some of the outside halves I've played with, are, uh, you won't see tackles like that in a, in a month of Sundays. You know, the oldest stadiums won't be happy to hear you say that, because <laughs> you said the, the, the players that the outside halves that you played with, not against. Exactly, yes, yeah. <laughs> so I think... You owe your outside half a beer <laughs> next time you meet. <laughs> so a high tackle penalised. And Kremlin find themselves knocking on the door here. Five metres out from the Tonner try line. Kremlin still looking for their opening score. Tyler Martin-Smith looking for the jumpers and the tallest of them all. That's uh, Kerrig Wilson. 
Outside half, lovely pass from Ethan Chess. So Kremlin looking for quick recycle ball. One more pass, perhaps. But look how quick Tonner are out of the defence. Craig Mitchell is there to get his hands on the ball. Not quite this time. Steele Jones. Not for the first time. It's uh, Cole Jones taking the ball up. He's carried well today. He certainly far. has. Steele Jones. Well, there's a way to celebrate your birthday. Kian Chess, 21 years of age, yesterday celebrating in style with a try at the Principality Stadium. The first try then in the National Shield final goes Kremlin's way and it's claimed by their lively industrious number seven, Kian Chess. Yeah, it was a fantastic, fantastically well worked try. Again, from the line out, they've gone wide, they've stayed calm. And they found a gap despite the uh, the oncoming pressure from Tono, which again has really been good today. And that's brought the Kremlin supporters to the edge of their seats. Uh, six buses at the last count made their way down from Kremlin, and a few more by train and by car, as Max Boyce would say. So some 13, 40 metres in from touch. The flags are in the air. And it's Scott Barnes stroking the conversion midway, right in the middle of the posts. And Crumlin lead by seven points to three. I think it's probably been deserved as well. They've had, the, seem to have had the lion's share of the possession. They've stayed calm. It's just a, an excellent defensive effort early on from Tonner that has uh, restricted them to just seven points so far. Yeah, they held Tonner out uh, in their own uh, 22, won a turnover, and incidentally it was uh, Key and Chess that won the turnover, and now down the uh, the far end, and it's Chess himself who gets uh, Tonner uh, crumbling onto the score sheet. And with the conversion, they lead by seven to three. Mitchell, nice pass out to uh, Josh James on the right, looks a step off his right foot. But fooling no one this time. Whip of a pass into the hands of uh, Kieran Cole. I think it was. Couldn't quite latch onto it. So it'll be a Kremlin scrum. I've been talking about the fortunes and misfortunes of the. Some teams in the lower league, and it's I fail, I think, to uh, remind ourselves that Kremlin, uh, some few years ago, they were deducted points for being unable to field the side. So what a turnaround it's been in their fortunes. Exactly, yes, yeah, it's uh, it's a credit to all those behind the scenes. Um, uh, just how hard they must have worked in order to, to get to a position like this today. So here they are leading Tonner in the National F Shield final by seven points to three on the charge from their own 22, and it's a... Uh, a move created in midfield, a decoy runner, and that's uh, allowed Joel Whitcomb to challenge from uh, up from his own 22, and away goes Tyler Lewis. Lewis for the try line, he won't be stopped. Tyler Lewis adds another try to his impressive tally this season. Two tries in as many minutes for Kremlin, and they've certainly got the best out of their legs. An excellent score that was, Win. Great break from, from Whitcomb, who's carried hard today. He looks... Uh, a real size as well so coming in from that uh, that angle he's uh, he's only going one way but again lovely offload out the back as well will be another he'll be telling everyone for years and a great finish from the winger 21st try of the season for Tyler Lewis three tries against uh, Hollyhead in the quarters four tries against uh, Ferndale in the semi so Kremlin on song Scott Barnes having succeeded from the other side of the field, this time right-footed. And there goes another one, adding another conversion. Two tries. Two conversions, and Kremlin lead a tonner by 14 points to three. Yeah, again, I, I think it's it's well deserved. They've really impressed me so far, Crumlin today. Yeah, I understand that uh, Scott Barnes was a, a water boy for Crumlin when he was about eight years old, and look at him now, still the youngest player in this uh, 
Kremlin lineup and uh, adding valuable points to the try scored by Kian Chess and now by Tyler Lewis. I think Tana really need to get back into this game now. They obviously have to to get the next points. It would be important for them to get the ball back and, and try and use it. Here's an, here's an opportunity straight away. Well, straight away and into the action. That's uh, Ben Thomas for Tana. He's just come onto the field, got his first touch, and Tana have struck back. And this is going to be a popular try. It's Josh Jones, the loose head brought forward. The front row union don't score that many tries, but that's one to celebrate, that's for sure. But great chasing initially by Ben Thomas. Carrick Wilson couldn't take for Kremlin. And that man was on hand. Yeah, that, that was exactly what they needed. Good pressure to get the ball back. And I can tell you now that the longer this day goes on, the further that Lucid, Lucid prop went in from as well. Great show and go, and good turn of pace to, uh, to go under the sticks as well. So. Excellent score. Yeah, we always say that about prop forwards, don't we? That'll be a 100-metre try by the time they get to the bar tonight. So which reflects well on the front row union that they're good storytellers. Exactly, yes. And better yeah. liars. Yeah. <laughs> He's putting the rest of us to shame there. It certainly is. Uh, the conversion is good from Josh James and uh, Tonna are right back in it. Crumlin 14, Tonna 10. We've had some excellent games this week, and I think this is uh, shaping up to be another cracker as well at the moment. Well, the best so far for me, I think, is the Isloon against Bridgend and at 11s earlier this week, and it finished 15 points all, and Isloon went to, out to a 15-point lead, and uh, it looked all over for Bridgend until the last few minutes, and they scored three tries. And, boy, all the emotions were displayed, uh, the, uh, the disappointment on the faces of the... Uh, the bridge end boys that they didn't quite make it but uh, that's been a highlight certainly and last night the mixed ability game as well and I have to confess I'm embarrassed to say it I'm ashamed to say it, that I'd never heard of the mixed ability uh, uh, rugby before but I certainly am impressed yeah it's something that uh, has been extremely popular and, and well organized by, by union staff and I know Darren Carew will, uh, will not let me mention it but he puts in some fantastic work with those teams so the rolling ball there, left by uh, Joel Whitcomb. It could have all gone so wrong, but uh, he just let it drift into touch and Kremlin will get the line out. It's a big line-out for Kremlin here, especially after conceding the last score. He could be behind within the blink of an eye. The Kremlin line out stretched back to the 15-metre uh, line. Claimed again by the main source of possession, that's uh, Carrig Wilson. Kremlin, well, they're looking to run it out of their own 22 once again. Adventurous play from the, uh, the Gwent outfit. Where's that going? Straight into touch, so they'll come all the way back. Yeah, again, credit for... Uh trying to seize the opportunity to go wide but unfortunate there from Tyler Lewis with the kick going straight out so Tonner late into the line out they're keeping Crumlin guessing here Kelly Wilson got a, a finger perhaps a hand to it and interrupted the the passage of the ball, but it's uh, still there. And it's Jason Evans on the charge. The support is good from his captain, McPhee. Lloyd Evans, there are men out wide. Lovely pass again from Ben Thomas. And the try is claimed by Dylan Foxwell. He's the top try scorer. Uh, my mistake. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Number lamb, Chris Miller. The excitement's getting us all year. Yeah, it, was a, is. it was a great break by uh, by Jason Evans. Again, good support from uh, 
from Lloyd Evans, who I believe it was. And again, well worked out wide for a, a great team score from Tonner. Well, Ben Thomas has just come on and he's on hand to deliver two tries for Tonner. And uh, Chris Miller on that occasion was the grateful recipient. So Josh James from right out on the far side, just inside that uh, five meter line. Sends it high and true. We've seen some excellent kicking this week, uh, Adam, as well, uh, on, from all ages, but that's a superb strike. You took the words right out of my mouth then, Wynn. Uh, again, from all, all ages, all levels, the standard of the, the kicking out of hand uh, from the tee has been, it's been fantastic. It's, uh, it's really impressed me, and that was just another one to add to the collection that we've had this week. So from being uh, 12 points to three down, Tonner now lead by 17 points to 14. Two evenly matched sides on the angle. That was Colin McFay. Referee not happy though. The pass was forward. Yeah, I think it was. I thought when he made it, held on just that extra half a second too long. Lovely break, but uh, yeah, I think that was the, the correct decision from the official there. Well, we've seen a bag of tricks from Kremlin, haven't we? And uh, equally adventurous play there from Tonner and their captain, Callum McPhee. I think it's credit to both clubs in that they're, uh, the occasion's not getting the better of them. And I assume they play, again, without seeing both teams on a weekly basis, I assume this, this is what you see from their, their supporters week in, week out. And like you say, the occasion's not getting the better of them and they're, they're playing the, the game they want to play and it's making for a fantastic spectacle. Uh, both teams have been scoring tries for fun uh, this season and they're not done yet because there's a, a little matter of a, uh, a trophy in the offing like on, on offer Kerry Wilson Whitcomb up from fullback Lewis again and the ball out on the fall he's had a great first half Kerry Wilson been impressive in the line out some nice little touches there some good carries he's uh, he's really put in the grunt for uh, for Kremlin yeah line out quickly taken by Tonner and it's taken play up to the Kremlin 10 meter line Jason Evans is receiving attention uh, for Tonner he's there outside half and he's back on his own 22 and the referee I think maybe allowing play to go on no he's had a quick look and time out, he says. He's been solid defensively, Evan, so I don't think that's definitely one uh, Tonner wouldn't want to lose at this stage of the game. Tonner almost uh, managing to disrupt the, uh, the Kremlin line-out. Uh, tipped back by uh, Kerry Wilson, I think it was, who's now standing in midfield with the uh, red sleeves and uh, headgear. There he is. Famous commentator's curse there. I think I put on a win. <laughs> always happens, Adam, <laughs> always happens. Dug out by... Uh, Steel Jones, the scrum half. Dan Lewis, get off the bus. You don't want to go high on a boy that size, I'm telling you. You've got to go low. The lower, the better. Neat little chip ahead. Unfortunately for Tonner, Lloyd Evans was uh, awake to the threat. Yeah, that was vital he got that out because they were. Uh two oncoming Kremlin players right the pounce there it's 
So just to confirm that it's Ben Thomas who's on for Tonner in place of the uh, injured Josh Ebbett. And Thomas is wearing 22. Finding himself out on the wing here. So Tonner look to clear their lines. Kick half charge down, won't find touch. I think they felt that challenge in the grandstand. Judging by the Uars that uh, come down from the East Stand. The level of physicality has been uh, has been extremely high so far today. And like you say, it's uh, the game's going on. You wonder how long like both teams can keep it up as well because it's must be taking a toll already. But for Tonner, Ben Thomas is out on the wing and it's uh, Chris Miller who's gone into midfield. So a little reorganization behind the scrum for Tonner. Safely into the hands there of Nicky Fisher who sends it high and long. A relieving kick from the Tonner centre who now finds himself uh, was there at fullback. Yeah, it was an outstanding kick that was again, just uh, just adding to the, the high levels we've had all week. Really good line clearance. Not straight. So Tonner will take that one and they'll opt for the scrum. and received best wishes from one of their former players Wales international former Wales international Paul Turner I think also of course of uh, Arthur Lewis and Mike Watkins and Andrew Gibbs as former players of uh, Kremlin RFC McPhee Jason Evans will kick through Covered by Ethan Chess. And the forwards there in numbers. Good covering by the Kremlin forwards. Chess again did well to gather that ball. He's uh, He's been really good so far today. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? Safely back into the hands. I think it's the inside centre, Cole Jones. That could have ended in disaster there. He was uh, he was quite lucky after the ton of forwards just managed to uh, to lose him. Hooker and uh, flanker combining. They don't want to give a bad ball back to Ethan Chess, who's caught there in the melee. Still, crumbling ball as Carrick Wilson. Extends that uh, right leg to give Steele Jones uh, a bit of cover for the clearance kick. And no sooner do you see a leg in the air that uh, there's a suspicious uh, from this angle. Win. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't a, a call from the official there, but uh, he was much closer to the action than exactly. we were. Oh, lovely step! And that step takes Nicky Fisher over the Kremlin try line. To extend Tonner's lead, well, they have been pressing. All credit to the Kremlin defence. It was that clearance kick that didn't quite reach touch. And this man, Nicky Fisher, adds another try to his impressive tally for the season. He's now up to 13, but Tonner are out to 22 points. Yeah, I think Fisher started and finished that. I think it all came from that accident clearance earlier on in the phase of play. They got the ball back, but a lovely line and great feet as well. Great try. You know, though we've just got a few thousand spectators in, I mean, there's a, a great atmosphere here. Oh, it's a fantastic win. And again, all spectators we've had all week, a credit to everyone. So that they're all a, a great credit to their clubs because we've had hardly any issues with everyone that's come through the doors. It's uh, It's been a fantastic week for all involved and we just hope everyone's had a great time. 
No issues for Josh James. He uh, retains his 100% record and takes Tonner out to a 10-point advantage as we approach half-time. It's Kremlin 14, Tonner 24. Credit to Tonner. Be at 11 points down and now going ahead by 10. They've uh, they've stayed patient, worked hard, and they uh, scored some cracking tries as well. Here's the try scorer Fisher with a long kick downfield. Whitcomb considers his options and sets it up for on the 10 meter line. Craig Mitchell making a nuisance of himself like every good wing forward should. Some of the counter wrecking from Mitchell today has been excellent. He's disrupted uh, plenty of crumbling ball and, like you say, forced a number of turnovers. He yeah, has good, good skills, has, has Mitchell. There he is. Trying to get the ball away, lovely work, one-handed pass to Nicky Fisher on the charge again. And Tonner came looking for a fourth try in this uh, first half. Looking to dance his way out of trouble. I think that was Scott Barnes. Didn't do too badly. And here's another youngster with uh, a try in his mind, and that's Ben Thomas. Initially, the outside half, Jason Evans gains another 5, 10 metres. And look how organised uh, Tonner players are on the attack here taking the ball back almost to the Kremlin 22 the captain McFay is uh, out amongst the backs as is the uh, flank forward Dom Morris this time perhaps it'll come scrum half tied in so it's left to uh, Kieran Cole the hooker Mitchell there again and as Jason Evans arrives uh, Lloyd Evans rather Oh, straight through the middle, a step. Everyone looking towards the referee, but the referee's round under the sticks. And it's a captain's try for Callum McPhee. You seem to start from Westgate Street there, Wayne. What an excellent run-up from him and a cracking line to come through there. That was, uh, that was a great individual, clever try from the, uh, from the skipper. And in the build-up to that try, we saw some uh, nice skills again from Craig Mitchell, didn't we? That pop-up pass was something sublime. Yeah, he's everywhere at the moment. He's uh, he's involved in the, the nitty-gritty, but again, with the uh, lovely little one-handed offload, he's uh, he's having an excellent game. Well, it appeared to be all crumbling, didn't it, when uh, Kian Chess uh, scored that try and Tyler Lewis followed up with a second in as many minutes, but uh, Tonna have kept their heads and now they've had their fourth try as Josh James eyes yet another conversion attempt and that goes the same way as the first three and uh, Tonner are out over the 30 points mark 31 points now against Kremlin's 14 yeah Tonner have really really turned it on the last 25 minutes I just hope Kremlin can stay with it now because it's uh, it's looking ominous unfortunately at the moment but I'm sure the uh, the Kremlin boys will uh, We'll give everything they got to, to, to continue in this game. It's 11 points for Josh James out on the right wing. Advantage uh, to Kremlin, and they'll need a score before the break, really. Because Tonna are threatening to run away with this one. Yes, yeah, the old cliche, but they have to score next Kremlin to, uh, to, to, to keep any chance of of hanging on to Tonner for the uh, for the remainder of the game. Uh, Kremlin have been averaging close on 50 points per game this season, even in the quarter and uh, semi-finals of the, the Shield. And Ferndale, well, they certainly gave Tonner a game in the semi-final, 25 to 12, the final scoreline. Kremlin come again through the danger man, Tyler Lewis, Ground by the shirt tails by uh, Morgan Chemis. The ball is tied up underneath a pile of bodies as Steele Jones goes in. The pass finds uh, Kyle Walton. Blindside wing forward Kerrig Wilson 
takes the ball into contact sets it up again quick ball that's what Steele Jones is looking for sends it out on the open side to Cole Jones sucking in another two ton of defenders he's carried hard this first half as the Kremlin inside centre really powerful looking player Tyler Madden Smith he's shaken off that uh, earlier injury as the ball is spun out wide Witzkirm up from full back in the shadow of the Tonner post this is good stuff from Kremlin now then the last pass for Tyler Lewis hopefully and round the corner comes the Kremlin captain Rhys Davis everyone looking towards the referee the ball didn't go forward it was snapped up again and passed out to uh, Taylor Lewis and Rhys Davis the captain and number eight 150 games this season and he scored a try at the uh, Principality Stadium which uh, has uh, given hope again to Kremlin who saw Tonner go out to 31 points to 14 lead and this conversion to come will close the gap to 10 yeah a bit of good fortune there for Kremlin that ball popped out perfectly another nice offload again well worked the uh, the patience from both sides in terms of the build-up has, has again been really good so far on display so good try for Kremlin and uh, game on game on indeed it's Scott Barnes lines it up and just sees his effort to drift wide or the far upright and that is the final bit of action of the first half and as we alluded to Kremlin needed a score and uh, score they did through the captain Rhys Davis so at the break then it's Kremlin 19 Tonner 31 50 points in the opening half and it all goes well for the second half in the first of the national finals for today it's a national shield final and a confirmation of the halftime score it's Kremlin 19 Tonner 31 
Welcome back to the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff and uh, we're at half time we're waiting the restart of the second half this match between uh, Tonna and Crumlin in the National Shield final four tries on the board for Tonna in that opening 40 which uh, took them out to a 31 points to 14 lead but uh, Crumlin struck back right at the stroke of half time through the captain Reese Davis and it's all to play for in the second half 50 points in that opening 40 uh, it's been a cracking game between these two sides down in division three of the uh, welsh rugby union national leagues so the referee joseph reese prepares to get the second half underway and it'll be crumlin's uh, cole jones to restart the inside center who's shown up well amongst uh, other players in that crumlin lineup in the opening half adam yeah definitely there's been a number of them who've had a, a great first half. And for both teams, to be fair, I think it's the occasion. Obviously, everyone wants to raise their game, playing on the national stadium. And this is no different for these lot. So let's hope the uh, the second half is just as good as the first, because we were we were treated to a cracker there. Yeah, seven tries in the opening uh, 40 minutes. And uh, yeah, both these teams have been scoring tries for fun this season. So Tyler Madden-Smith. Ball palmed down, one-handed. Threw very quickly on the loose ball was Tonner's Dom Morris. Nice angle from the captain, Callum McVeigh, among the try scorers for Tonner in that uh, opening 40. But can't prevent uh, Crumlin from spinning it wide to the danger man, Tyler Lewis. Yeah, he had a great first half. He was full of confidence. Every time ball in hand, he looked to take on his opposite number and uh, and go round him a couple of times. But uh, he's going to be full of beans for this second half. I just wonder whether we'll see him uh, come in off his wing, perhaps, to look for more opportunities in this uh, second 40, because oh. he can beat the first defender, we know that. Without a doubt, he's a danger man, so you want to get his hands on the ball as much as you can, I think. So let's see what Crumlin do with it. So Whitcomb up from fullback, uh, Ethan Chess taking the ball up a little further. This is Steel Jones, what is it, the fourth generation of Joneses? to play for Kremlin, his father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather represented Kremlin. So continuing a, a long, proud tradition for Kremlin RFC. He seemed to have the biggest cheer from the crowd when the names were called out prior to the game as well, so I bet uh, there's a lot of family there today. Yeah, he's a number nine, but he can play anywhere and will play anywhere behind the scrum if need be. There he is, Steele Jones. So a player was certainly impressed in the uh, opening half. That's Kian Chess, the uh, Kremlin number seven. Change of direction. For the penalty awarded for well, for Tonner crossing in midfield is the offence. A nice kick. Penning Crumlin back into their own 22. Yeah, that was clever from Fisher. He saw there was no one home at playing, so rather than go straight out, he's looked to play it off the ground, and it's uh, it's paid off. Well, the forwards will certainly thank him for that. There's nothing worse for a forward, is there, than uh, come up off the ground and find that the kick has uh, gone way, way back over your head. And Crumlin had to track back there. The start all over again. Tonner. Get the drive on at the heels. That's Lloyd Evans, the scrum half, and uh, he's directing proceedings. And Tonner will get a penalty here. Five meters short. We're playing under referee's uh, advantage. Evans gets away from the first uh, tackler, turns his back against the opposition. An unlikely scrum half, and that's uh, Andrew Millard, the lock forward. Leave it to me, says Evans. Josh Evans, Jason Evans, rather. Nice. Crossfield kick and the touchdown is confirmed by the referee. Try awarded. Yeah, it was a very clever finish there. I think he was anticipating the smash from the, the Crumlin defender. Tried to go on the on outside, outstretched that, extends the lead for Tonna. Uh, Chris Miller. Gets his second try. First try of the second half to take Tonner out to a 17-point lead. 
And this is going to be the most difficult kick of the afternoon, perhaps, for Josh James. Although he did kick one uh, against the grain, so to speak, didn't he, from the far touchline in the first half. But he is a right-footed kicker. So this could well be within his radar. He's going to want to keep that 100% record up, so I wouldn't bet against him here, win. 11 points so far in the match. A fifth try for Tonner. Struck it beautifully. Superb effort once again. Exemplary kicking from Josh James. Yeah, outstanding conversion. 100% record, 13 points. Crumlin 19, Tonner 38. That's the worst possible start Crumlin could have wanted there, especially after getting right back into it at the end of the first half. The uh, score has, has been extended again now for Tonner, so let's see what they can do. So Tonner in the driving seat. They've got one hand on the shield. Let's see how Crumlin respond. It's a beautiful, beautifully weighted uh, crossfield kick from Jason Evans, straight into the hands of uh, Nicky of uh, Chris Miller. It's a big scrub for Crumlin here. Yeah. You want to take him on, try and get that ball back to give your team the best possible advantage. Tonner hold firm. A testing kick for Dylan Foxhall. Great defensive chase from Tonner there. They were right up in his face. Yeah, the kick from Nicky Fisher now at uh, fullback. Tyler Lewis looks to break out of his own 22, gets the support from Cole Jones. Crumlin looking to barge the way upfield, trying to find a hole in the Tonner defence. Kerrig Wilson almost makes the breakthrough. Now then, Crumlin have the numbers. He's Whitcomb up from fullback, and this is the loose head prop, Gavin Spencer. That's back inside and creates perhaps a, an opening on the narrow side. Here's the replacement, Jordan Hughes, on for Gavin Hipkiss. That look forward for Kremlin. Jones, the long pass, finding Kyle Walton. It's a neat little step, but fooling no one in the uh, Tonner defence. But back they go on the narrow side through the captain, Rhys Davis. Scored the try right to the death of the uh, first half, which gave uh, Crumlin some confidence. And they'll gain more confidence here now as Walton drives again at the heart of the Tonner defence. The ball is there, snapped up by Steele Jones to no one in particular. Well picked up there by Scott Barnes. Look how organised that Tonner defence is, and uh, straight through uh, came uh, Nicky Fisher, giving chase now. And Tyler Lewis is back there. He needs to be careful because Morgan Chemis is up on him. Oh, what well, good work by uh, Tyler Lewis, and the supporting player was Ethan Chess, the outside half. And Tonner are there in numbers. I think they can smell blood here, Tonner. Crumlin looked to appear to be tiring. Whereas Tonna seemed to have found a, a, an extra gear going for in that uh, defensive effort as well. It was really impressive. Yeah, Tonna well in control, aren't they? They're not phased at all by these uh, attacks uh, from uh, Kremlin, one after the other. They're coping very well. They obviously have confidence in their own defence, and you can see why. The effort has been outstanding. Um, some great first up hits, well, well, well drilled as well. So it's uh, 
I think it's Tonnes to lose at the moment anyway. Yeah, when you look at this uh, Tonnes squad, all the uh, 23 players have come through the uh, the system, the juniors and the, the youth. And we've referred already to Craig Mitchell and he's uh, reached the highest stage of all, of course. And has been influential in the uh, team's performance uh, this season. Wealth of experience and uh, he's... Uh, I don't. I, I can't, uh, sorry, excuse me. I don't think it could be underestimated what a, an influence someone like Craig Mitchell will have on a, a team like Tonna, um, with all his experience in in playing for Wales and and having those international caps to play with friends for his his local club. It must be such a boost for the players, and you can see why they've excelled this season as well. Yeah, he re only returned to the club uh, last year, but he's passed on that all that experience uh, to uh, to the remainder of the squad, and they've. Uh, fed off him and they've grown his stature as well as the season has progressed he hasn't missed a beat either as he win because he's had an excellent game he certainly has as has this young man started at center moved to fullback and uh, at center there again but uh, Tonner penalized this time for going off their feet it's a rare penalty against uh, Tonner in the breakdown yes yeah, nice opportunity for Crumley get their breath regroup and see what they can do in uh, with a kick to put to, to come to touch. That's a great occasion here in Cardiff. Bright sunshine, but it's taking its toll on the players. Needing to take on fluids. Keep uh, hydrated. We say we've been treated to some crackers this week, and this isn't letting us down. I'm sure Brinkethin and Lanharan and Penalta and Trioki in the, the following games are, are going to do exactly the same as well. Yes, everything to play for today in the uh, bowl final Brinkethin and Lanharan, the kickoff at uh, 3.15, and then the national plate final Trioki against Penalta, and that's at uh, 5.30 this afternoon. And all these games, of course, being streamed uh, this week. Tomorrow, it's the Senior Women's National Finals Day. The North Wales Cup Final, Carnarvon and Cobra South Wales Plate Final, Lampeter against Blackwood South Wales Cup Final, uh, Bonamine against uh, Thandaff. And then on Monday, we'll have the Girls National Finals Day Plate uh, Cup, uh, under-18s and under-15s. So Crumlin, get the ball into the hands of Cole Jones. He'll do some damage. Again, Tonner's eth defensive effort has been outstanding. They've been a nuisance at the breakdown. All, all pack all their forwards throughout the day. Yeah, they're up very quickly out of the defensive line, perhaps too quickly on this occasion, as uh, it's Scott Barnes who has a go. Takes play up to the uh, Tonner 22. Ball stolen illegally, says uh, referee Rees. So slowly but surely, Crumlin are making their way upfield and uh, they've stemmed the tide at the moment. Yeah, again, they're going to need to score very soon. So it's Cole Jones to uh, kick for territory here and uh, taking uh, play almost up to the five metre line. It's uh, close enough for a driving line out. If they have a mind to, that they need to win the ball first. And uh, Tonner have uh, almost got the measure of this uh, Kremlin lineout. Knowing that Kerry Wilson is the main man, there he is. Catches it cleanly, out it goes to the replacement uh, scrum half. Nice step. It goes without the ball. Didn't go forward or did it? Yes, it did, says referee Joe Reese. Yeah, that's unfortunate there. 
he's had a great game as uh, as Ethan Chess, but he was unlucky to lose that ball in contact there. Some nice feet shown, but again, it's uh, Tonable. Coming on for Tonner is Luke Payne, and off goes uh, Josh Hughes, the second row. And it's Corey Strickland at uh, scrum half for Crumlin, wearing number six on his back. And coming down to the front, that's uh, Jordan Hughes for Crumlin here. A five man, six man line out. Over the top it goes to Walton. Standing alone at the back of that line out and marked. Driving forward, Strickland. You can see the ball, can't get his hands to it. Probably because there was a ton of hand on it. Yeah, they're, they're getting opportunities crumbling with, with these penalties, but I suppose it's, it's just as frustrating for them is that they're, they're not possible at the moment to do anything with it, unfortunately. So Cole Jones again to give his team territory and Kremlin need to score here now you can see that uh, the tired legs out there but it's surprising what a try can do I'm sure they'll find that extra gear if they're able to get over in the next couple of minutes Owen Nesbitt is on for Tonner in place of uh, Lloyd Evans at scrum half. Loud cheers from the Tonner supporters as Lloyd Evans is a, a firm favourite amongst the uh, the Tonner squad. Yeah, he played well. He was uh, he's a tough cookie for a scrum half, and he almost there for Jordan Hughes as Tonner snaffled the uh, line out from. Uh, Kremlin's grasp were there and they will get the scrum because the uh, ball had been nudged forward at the line out. Again, silly mistakes letting them down, unfortunately, at the moment, Kremlin. So from one side of the park to the other. And this time it's a, a tonner throw in at the line out. Number 22 now at uh, the base of that Crumlin scrum is actually Corey Strickland. It was Dylan Musto, I think, that was wearing the six jersey before. Just a slight confusion. Great steal from Wilson there. Crumlin have to do something here now. Walton on the angle takes it in. Luke Payne. Tries to get his hands on it uh, for Tonner, wearing 19. This is much better from Crumlin. They've got options left and right here now. It's on its way. And finding Ethan Chess. Still there. Cole Jones. Five metres out. Strickland. Sends the bus out in the direction of uh, Ethan Chess, who can't uh, 
quite latch on to it. But it's still there, no harm done. And this time it'll be the forwards to take it up through uh, Carrick Wilson and uh, Ethan Chess alongside him. Craig Mitchell will have to make an effort to get out of there. Because, uh, oh, is it? No, it's uh, Johnny Thomas, my mistake, the uh, tight head prop. Same barber as Craig Mitchell. I don't think it was too much of an effort to get that ball in, uh, to be fair, from the, uh, from the tight head. Jordan Hughes runs straight and tall into the tackle. Crumlin, for all they might, testing the uh, the Tonner defence again. Can they make the breakthrough, perhaps through Jewel Whitcomb? And he is taken by Jason Evans, the Tonner outside half. The captain, Rhys Davis, to the ever-present uh, Kian Chess. This time almost an interception. And there's a penalty. Was that deliberate? There's a yellow card on its way here for Morgan Chemis. Yeah, that seemed, seemed a bit daft, to be fair. He didn't have much chance of uh, getting hold of that with the ball so high in the air. So, Well, you take the risk, don't you? Exactly, Win. He saw his name in lights there. Pick it, <laughs> picking one off 80 metres out and going under the sticks to seal the game. But uh, unfortunately, it, uh, it didn't work out well, well for him. Still in the limelight, is, uh, the camera is on him as he walks off the field. And Crumlin making one or two adjustments uh, at uh, forward. We'll just catch up with the uh, Kremlin replacements. In place of Kyle Walton, it's uh, Dean Ackerman in the back row. And in place of Tyler Madam Smith, it's Gavin Davis at hooker. It's a huge lineup for Crumlin here. Win. See Kerrig Wilson. I'd be surprised if it went anywhere else other than him at the moment. This is what Tonic can do to match it. It's front of the lineout ball for Crumlin, and they've been pressing hard for the last uh, five minutes or so. A succession of uh, lineouts within five, ten meters of that Tonner try line. Out it goes uh, to uh, Tyler Lewis. He's already got one try, cutting back inside, but the Tonner defence. Holds firm for the moment, now then the replacement just come on the field, that's Gavin Davis pumping the legs, as indeed is Dean uh, Ackerman at uh, wing oh. forward, but it's uh, picked up there by uh, Luke Payne, I think it was, great work by the uh, replacement, but hold on, hold the back page, uh, here's Ethan Chess looking for his second, but thwarted by the referee. Yeah, again, I think he's chanced his arm there, but uh, must have no avail. But again, Tonner's Tonna, defence today has been absolutely brilliant and, and credit must go to them for the, for the tenacity they've had at the breakdown as well. They come away with turnover after turnover, to be fair, in, in key positions for Crumlin as well. And it's, uh, that's why they're, they're in the position they are at the moment. Yeah, their attack has been uh, superb. Five tries uh, to the good. But uh, Crumlin have weathered the storm and they just can't break down that resolute... Uh, Tonner defence, as you've already alluded to, Adam. No, they seem to be running out of ideas, unfortunately. Um, and again, it's as a player, you know it's disheartening when you're trying your best and nothing's coming off and there's just a, a red wall in front of you, unfortunately, at the moment. And there's a replacement on for Tonner, wearing number 17. That's uh, Tom Parry, and he replaces Josh Jones at uh, loose head. So Tonner, remember, down to uh, 14 men as their captain, 
He's receiving attention back in his uh, 22, and that's the that's Callum McFay who's uh, just stretching his calves. These stoppages seem to be getting longer and longer at the moment. When, like you say, it's a big old track for these players out there, and it's uh, it's really starting to take its toll. So lifted high into the sky, that was Dom Morris, the Tonner number seven, flank forward. So Tonner, resolute in defence, and now a chance to uh, attack from halfway. And this is Luke Payne. Goes without the ball, Crumlin, desperate to get their hands on it. <sighs> Unlucky Nicky Fisher. And the game was bound to uh, die off a little as a spectacle because the, fo the first 40 minutes, you know, it was paid, played as uh, quite a lick, wasn't it? That would have taken a lot, like you say, to continue the whole game at that pace. Uh, win, and I, th I think it's both teams, unfortunately, making a few enforced errors now, and it's uh, it's catching up with both teams. Well, Tonner not having the upper hand at the moment. 38 points to 19, down to 14 men. That's the best place to be, probably, in the East Stand in the sunshine. Seems to be great numbers here already for the day, so it only bodes well for uh, for the remaining games. I think it's the biggest crowd we've had all week, isn't it? Stretching along the uh, middle terrace of the East Stand. And a few hospitality boxes are uh, occupied as well, which is uh, good news for those that uh, can afford it, I suppose. Exactly, when yeah, they'll be enjoying themselves today. Yeah, it's a rare opportunity. Uh, to visit the Principality Stadium to support your own team as opposed to supporting the the national team, of course. And next door at the uh, Arms Park, the Wales uh, ladies have been playing Italy. The game should be over by now, to seven all with less than ten minutes remaining. on a contingent in the fine voice and that's no surprise yeah both teams in excellent spirits I bet there were a few early starts this morning a couple of local pubs in Cardiff I bet had some uh, boosted earnings for the uh, for the early kickoffs anyway yeah it was good to read you know and interesting to read and follow the uh, uh, the Facebook pages and the Twitter pages as well the organization uh, you know at the uh, respective clubs uh, uh, on duty here today. Oh yeah, as I said, dealing with with both clubs and John John Townsend from Crumlin and Stu James from Tonna, they they've been excellent help, and I'm sure they they put so much effort themselves into the to the day to ensure that the players and spectators have a have a fantastic day. So Crumlin still plugging away. Well covered there by Chris Miller. Number 11 for Tonner as Crumlin threatened. McPhee pops it up. But Tom Parry couldn't quite bend or stoop low enough to uh, to take the pass. No, he's, he's had a good game, McPhee. That was unlucky. The pass just a little bit too low for the oncoming player, but. He seems to be a clever player. He's, he's led well from the front today.
18 on for Tonner, that's Chris Partin. And he's on for Johnny Thomas. And quite a few players stretching the calves now late into this match. Yeah, physios appear to be appear to be earning their keep at the moment. Yeah, more running repairs for the Tonner captain, Callum McFay. Scored one of 11 tries against uh, Hollybush in the quarterfinals. So the clock has been stopped. And that means uh, to Morgan Chemist, there's another three minutes or so in the sin bin for that uh, deliberate knock on. Craig Mitchell winning six there, just uh, having a quiet word with the forwards. Just keep your concentration. We've got this one in the bag. Yeah, the players will be looking to him for experience now. They're, they're, they're so close to the uh, to the trophy. They don't want to be throwing this away with any silly mistakes. So I'm sure Craig will, uh, will, will keep a lid on things for them. So play restarts with a Kremlin line-out and again taken safely by uh, Kerrig Wilson. The bounce kind for Josh James. Kick strikes a Kremlin player, but it's uh, Cole Jones. If anyone's going to make that breakthrough for Kremlin, it would appear that it's going to be uh, Cole Jones. Yeah, it looks like that win. He's got his hands on the ball a number of times today and really carried hard. Jordan Hughes, it was, taking it into contact. But the tackling is solid from uh, Tonner. Cole Jones down on the, the far side to Crumlin. One man short at the moment. And as Gavin Davis uh, has a run, wearing 20. And this is Tyler Lewis. Heads up, oh, makes off. the breakthrough. Now then, he's got the pace as well. Looking to cut in between two... Tonner players, listen to the crowd in the uh, East Stand there. The Crumlin supporters have not given up hope, and neither have their players. Again, we mentioned earlier how dangerous he looked. That was a great break. He backed himself, but great defence from uh, from Tonner once again. Uh, Kent Walton, it was. Kent Walton. <laughs> Kyle Walton, it was, who took it in. Just loses the ball forward, but wins a penalty here for Crumlin. And Cole Jones is still down on the on the far side there. That was a good uh, good break by Tyler Lewis. He, uh, as soon as he got the ball in hand, he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Had playing heads up rugby. Oh, he didn't have to go for it. <laughs> he didn't quite have the pace. Uh, Unfortunately, not no. And he uh, he backed himself, but again, some great cover tackle from uh, from Tonner. Uh, Nicky Fisher. Looks as if his game is done. When the shirt is rolled up over the elbow, you know that uh, there's a shoulder injury. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's run his race, unfortunately. And he's had a good game, in fairness, and he's been in the thick of it, hasn't he? He started at centre, moved to full-back, put in a few uh, probing kicks. Yeah, got his name on the score sheet as well, so he's uh, afternoon well done for the player, I think. So the Tonner supporters showing their appreciation for the walking wounded, and that's uh, Nicky Fisher at uh, the Crumlin Centre. Cole Jones is uh, still down, receiving treatment.
So we're still waiting to uh, restart the match for the referee. Of course, he's uh, had to blow up uh, to allow Cole Jones to walk off when he did, I'm glad to say, Adam. Yeah, definitely. Again, our South Wales medical team who have been on duty for the week straight there but great to see him get up because it would have uh, been a shame because he's he's had another one who's had a fantastic game yeah but again the medics wanted to give him time really to to recover and just to make sure that uh, no damage uh, had been done So Crumlin, having had a breather, Gavin Davis turns and lays the ball back and any number of players in midfield ready to take it up. That's uh, big Dan Lewis. Ball worked back to Strickland at scrum half. Carrick Wilson, head down, charges towards the, the Tonna try line. Craig Mitchell again, all arms and legs at the breakdown. Spencer. So how did Tonna scramble that one clear? Great chase as well. Now then. Crumley needs some uh, support here because Tonna have uh, turned the ball over and Crumley now at sixes and sevens as Callum McPhee is on the, uh, on the charge. Can't get the ball back cleanly at the moment. Nesbitt, the replacement scrum half. A little show there out on the uh, far left. Nesbitt again round the narrow side. And this will clinch it for Tonna if ever there was a doubt. Oh, I but think hold on. I think hold on. Yeah, he's, ruined. he's put, a, put the Knicks on it, I think, win. His little toe may well have been on the whitewash. He'll argue to the day he died, he was never in touch there as well, but uh, unfortunately. So denied. And Callum McFay has been patched up once again. <laughs> I think Tonna's fitness is uh, beginning to show a bit now more, a bit, bit stronger than, than Crumlin's. I think evidenced by that kick chase then. Fantastic chase and great work to turn the ball back over as well. Colin McVay back up on one leg and uh, it looks as if he uh, will have to call it a day. And that being the case, then uh, Adam Gubb will come on for him as uh, Tonna... Well, can't really afford to empty the bench because uh, there have been any number of injuries and uh, any number of readjustments, but every player in that squad is uh, likely to get an opportunity before the game is out, and they still hold on to a healthy advantage, uh, 19 points, and by 38 to 19. Lifted high and supported, perhaps I should say, Andrew Millard. Slow ball. Jason Evans waits, has a go himself with the offload to the newcomer. That's Adam Gubb on for his captain. Ball bobbling one way, then the other, but Tonner on the front foot, and they have numbers out wide here. The basketball pass from uh, Luke Payne not going to hand. And Crumlin get it into the hands of uh, Jewel Whitcomb. That's uh, Carrig Wilson, Walton. And he's done some good work for Crumlin this afternoon. Look like a bit of a cheap shot there from Crumlin's number 19. Bit of a close line. <laughs> Now 
Yeah, I think it was spotted in the uh, in the stand on the far side by the supporters. Not necessarily by the referee's assistant on the near side, who was closest to the action. It's always the way they're winning, and they always see everything, and coaches and supporters and everything that referees unfortunately don't. And commentators as well, you have to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Getting your first taste in the commentary box, Adam. What, <laughs> exactly, how, yes. How yeah. about it? <laughs> it's a coming and throwing uh, of the substitutes. That's what can be uh, confusing. Oh, big time. <laughs> big time. I can, uh, I can understand that. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great effort. It's pretty much been stop-start in this uh, second half. As the day and the heat and the uh, hardness of the ground underfoot has taken its toll. So the referee reminding the uh, the front rowers here and the, of course their replacements and every time a, a whole front row replacement comes on then there needs to be a, a timely reminder from the referee. Because it's a long time since he uh, had a word with them in the dressing room. And they do forget quite easily. Exactly, the, yes. The yeah, the, uh, the other things on their mind, unfortunately, <laughs> win. So they, it'll, uh, that's a great scrum from Tana, though. Don Morris controlling at the base. It will be a full penalty here. Excellent well, control. Really well worked. They didn't panic. They kept the ball in. They knew exactly what they were doing there, Tana, and, uh, and they got their reward. And you can see the confidence oozing from every paw at the moment. Yeah, they've, they've got one hand on the trophy. We think with a dominant scrum in a position like that, it's only going to uh, could make things a bit worse for Crumlin, unfortunately. Yeah, Josh James knows that he didn't get the best uh, connection on that ball, but it's safely into touch. Directly beneath us here in the West Stand. Kieran Cole can't quite find his man, so the ball lost forward. And Rhys Davis, the Kremlin captain, urging his uh, players on to one more effort. He know it's he knows it's a tough ask and a tough task. So soon after the last scrum, now I'm sure the Tonner front row are thinking we'll have a little bit of the same as last time. Pops out. Advantage Kremlin. I thought it was. Miller. Nesbitt out to the outside half. A little poke through meant uh, for the replacement on the far side. Just nudges the ball forward. Tonner coming close again to uh, a sixth try. Yeah, it was a lovely little nudge there. Shingle winger just couldn't keep hold of it. So we have another replacement, the non for Tonna in the middle of that. Uh, Front row, and he's Steve Wolf. And the cheers you hear are for the uh, substituted player, and he is uh, Kieran Cole, the hooker. Good shift from Kieran Cole this afternoon. Yeah, I think he's in party mode already. He was getting the crowd right wild up then, <laughs> so he's. Uh... Yeah, great party atmosphere here as Tonner. Put pressure on that uh, Kremlin scrum and Tyler Lewis it is who clears his lines. But the pressure is still on. This lineout will take place uh, well, some 20 metres out from the Kremlin dry line. A 
50 points in that opening 40 minutes. First throw in then for Steve Wolf. May have been an overthrow, but it's uh, snapped up by Luke Payne. No harm done, Wolf, to take it up. He wants to make up uh, for lost time, thought perhaps that he might uh, or should have started. Millard just about manages to get the ball away as far as Chris Miller turns his back against the opposition, sets it up nicely. Great angle Another from great uh, Luke Payne, looking for the weak inside shoulder. The outside half loops the pass out this time. Ben Thomas makes no mistake. And that crowns the day for Tonner, without a doubt. Out over 40 points. A sixth try for Tonner then, and they now have both their hands on the shield. Yeah, it was inevitable there, I think it was coming. Well, great work from Jason Evans, nice looping pass, and a nice finish from Thomas. The credit where credit's due, Tonner have been excellent today, and I, I, I credit to, to Crumlin as well, who, who've, uh, who've played their part in a fantastic game, but Tonner have, uh, they've been really impressive. They certainly have, and uh, Crumlin had opportunities when they had a succession of uh, lineouts uh, and penalties within 10 metres or so, 15 metres perhaps, of the Tonner try line, but the Tonner defence uh, held firm. And uh, as the, uh, the day and the heat has taken its toll perhaps on Crumlin, Tonner have stepped up a gear again, and to maintain his 100% record, Josh James... Uh, had already turned, knowing full well that the ball was on its way. And what an excellent afternoon of place kicking this young man has had. Josh James, he's not missed a beat, nor a kick all afternoon. And that kick takes Tonner out of 45 points against Crumlin's 19. Another outstanding conversion. So 15 points uh, is Josh James's tally. We've not seen too much of Craig Mitchell with ball in hand. He's been uh, more uh, destructive than creative. <laughs> Penalty goes against Crumlin. And a chance for Tonner to uh, send the ball downfield. Yeah, there's a few tired bodies out there now. It's a few more silly mistakes that, that wouldn't be made in the first half. So James sends it on its way. And players trotting to the line-out, whereas they were sprinting to the line-out earlier on. So Stephen Wolf. So some two or three minutes remaining of this uh, first of three finals today, the Shield final. And Tonner have uh, given us an excellent uh, display of uh, running rugby to cross uh, six times and take their total out to 45 points with uh, Josh James just kicking. Adam Gubb might want to have the final world at Nesbitt. Great hands from James again. Great, and wouldn't it be fitting for this man to claim the last score, but he's headed off at the pass. Scott Barnes in with the tackle. And great build-up from Tonner. I think they look like they want to get over that 50 mark for the day. So Kremlin back on their heels and back on their own try line. Scored uh, some good tries themselves. But not scored in this uh, second half. Uh, 
third try was claimed by the captain Reese Davis on the stroke of half time and promised so much in the second 40 but they've been on the defensive for the greater part of that match uh, of the second half as Craig Mitchell or perhaps it's fitting that he should get the final word for Tonna such a, an influence having returned to the club this year the international player with 15 caps uh, to his name maybe 35 years old by now but he's not forgotten where the try line is and that try takes Tonna to a total of 50 points with a conversion to come I think he's heard you win when you said he didn't have didn't do much with the ball in hand today so he had a point to prove but uh, athletic powerful man like that you're not going to stop him from close out and Josh James is not going to miss from uh, close to and there it is then the final act of this shield final is a conversion 100% record then for Josh James and Tonna have defeated Kremlin by 52 points to 19 yeah scoreline probably doesn't really reflect how well Kremlin did play today they were uh, they were in it for large parts of the game but again Tonna were very clinical and, and very sharp in attack and defense and credit all round they've uh, they've been absolutely fantastic today yeah well drilled side clearly that in evident uh, throughout the the 80 minutes and the influence of that man uh, as well in the uh, first half in particular Lloyd Evans uh, at the base of the forwards uh, forward effort and using all his vast experience the final word went to uh, Craig Mitchell and uh, Tonna well, the whole village uh, will be delighted with the team's effort because the club itself is at the uh, the heart of everything that's good about uh, the village of Tonna as had been evidenced over the uh, the pandemic as indeed has uh, Kremlin of course but on the day right from the outset such a vocal support I was chatting to some of their VIP members today and they told me that they'd asked the last one to turn the lights off and leave in Tonna because I think <laughs> they've all come down here today and, and like you say it's, it's such a, a, a great occasion for them and for their fans and some of these teams like you mentioned earlier we will we'll have had struggles over the last couple of years but uh, like like everyone has unfortunately with the, with the pandemic but for an occasion like this today uh, it'll be memories to last a lifetime we hope and everyone just has a, a fantastic day yeah you said it there Adam I mean uh, trophies gather dust but memories last a lifetime and uh, you know these people these players they all have their personal stories and backstories and I dare say there have been personal tragedies as well uh, I mean both Tonna and Crumlin but they've been able to put those uh, behind them today and let's congratulate Crumlin uh, as we uh, congratulate Tonna because they've certainly entered into the spirit of this uh, National Shield final scored some nice tries uh, themselves uh, for Kieran Chess in particular he certainly impressed Tyler Lewis out on the on the right that the uh, the Tonna players they had they had the muscle the the uh, overpowered uh, Crumlin and that was evident in the second half as they uh, well, they raced clear, didn't they, in the final 40, yeah. and that uh, try from Craig Mitchell was the icing on the cake. Yeah, they they played their part for a for a fantastic uh, piece of history, I suppose, with the first ever WIU Shield final. But they were, uh, as you mentioned, they, they were just overpowered, unfortunately, at the end. Some good performers. Cole Jones carried really well in the midfield as well today. He was uh, he was like a battering ram, and he went well. But um, unfortunately, it just wasn't their day. And Tonna, well, they know that it's uh, just a job uh, half done, done because they've won the shield. They can now go back home and concentrate on the league in Division 3 West uh, Central Sea. They head the division. And they've averaged 47 points a game. Well, there we are. They've kept up the average. 52 points to 19. It's finished. I think that'll be the last thing on their minds for the next couple of days when I think the bank holiday weekend as well and a great great performance like that they'll uh, they're in for a, uh, a good few days I'm sure I should think so so let's join in the celebrations and the in the congratulations as well for Tonna who will uh, come up shortly to uh, receive their medals and of course the shield itself and there it is the WIU national shield that awaits the winners in 2021-22 and they are the team from uh, Tonna so in the first uh, final of the day it's West defeats East
Credit must go to the match officials as well. They so played their part for a great game. So you know the presentation party, Adam? Yes, yeah. Alan Jones, District D representative, of which Tonner are from, uh, giving the medals. So I think it's a, uh, a fit in touch that, that their representative is uh, is able to pr provide the first shield uh, ever awarded from the WRU for this competition and uh, and, and fitting winners in, in Tonner Rugby Club. And the medal for the referee, Nathan James, Joe Reese, and Reese Miller, Cretney, Thomas Kiru are the uh, supporting officials. Medals and for the runners up, that's Jordan Hughes. Gavin Davis. Big Dan Lewis. Gavin Spencer. Well, you can tell that they're disappointed, but they needn't be disillusioned. They, uh, Committed themselves wholeheartedly to the effort. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, even just to get to the final is is an achievement in itself. And I know it's uh, not really a consolation considering what the score was. But um, again, like we mentioned earlier, th these memories will stay with these players for the for the rest of their lives, and it's something to tell their, their friends and family about for a, for a long, long time. Joel Whitcomb. Scott Barnes and Kerry Wilson, the main man at the line-out. Yeah, it's the one and only opportunity for any number of these players probably to, uh, to play at the Principality Stadium. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Craig Mitchell aside, like you say, it's, it's their, their one and only and it's, uh, it's, it's credit to the Union, I think, for our competitions committee in terms of, of arranging a competition like the Shield to ensure that uh, it gives even more teams an opportunity to get onto our, our national stadium and experience a day like this. Lloyd Evans. <laughs> Nicky Fisher. And Josh James, 100% kicking record. And again, credit to Crumlin, right in front of the players there, clapping them off. It, it, little touches like that, it goes a long way for the event. And it just shows the sign of, of what a great club they are. for the big chair for Craig Mitchell and he'll be as proud of that medal I should think as the uh, as he was of the 15 caps that he he won for Wales Callum McPhee calling up all the uh, the support team for their medals. The captain who had to depart uh, some 10 minutes before the final whistle. There's a special one for the for the trainer for the medic. This is the one they've been waiting for, I think, when we look forward to this one. It certainly is. Alan Jones presents the Welsh Rugby Union National Shield to the winners in 2021-22. And they are from the village of Tonner. They defeated the village of Crumlin by 52 points to 19. And up it goes into the sky at the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff to signify that Tonner are the winners of the National Shield this season 
in what has been a very difficult season all around. But all congratulations go to both these teams, Kremlin and Tonner, for an entertaining match in the National Shield final. And coming up then, it'll be the National Bowl final between Bryn Kethin and Tlanharan, and that will be uh, equally keenly fought between uh, those two teams who know each other very well. Yeah, another cracker we've got in store. So a few more obligatory photographs uh, for the newspapers and for the uh, for the album as well, if there is such a thing as an album these days, but for posterity, certainly. Yeah, it's fantastic for the players. We sound like Scrooges, some of the staff sometimes, because we, we appreciate they want to stay there as long as possible and get us photos. I think with the days we have, we have to sort of egg them on in the end and say, look, get in there and, and get in the show as ASAP. Yeah, because the more teams uh, ready to uh, play their parts and the dressing rooms are needed they need to be cleaned i suspect exactly yeah the, the whole day the whole operation both teams now will will have a, a post-match presentation in our international players lounge we'll ask the captains and representatives from each clubs to say a few words um they'll be fed and watered of course and it's again it's just a great occasion for them to to another part of, of what is is a, a memorable memorable occasion for uh, for both parties so that Day is far from over for Kremlin and Tonner following that uh, Shield final. So we'll congratulate Tonner. Congratulations to Tonner RFC. They are our National Shield final winners for 2021-22. Stay with us here on YouTube and on WRU TV for the National Bowl final, which will kick off at 15:15. Uh, That's uh, a quarter past three and we'll be live for that as the teams come on to the field.
That is the National Bowl, which uh, awaits the winner of the next uh, competition today, in the National Bowl final between Bryn Cethin and San Haran, live from the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff. We've had uh, uh, an excellent uh, National Shield final claimed by Tonna over Crumlin uh, in the last uh, half an hour or so, but the stage is set now for the National Bowl final between the Cherry Whites of Bryn Cethin and the Dairymen of San Haran. And let's have a look at the, uh, the team sheets, the lineup for Bryn Cathin. Connor Buckle, David Evans, and Yayan Davis form the front row. Mark Thomas and Tobias Hent, the lock forwards. Reese Bridgman, Sam Schillibier, and Morgan Griffiths, the, the captain in the back row. Kai Bradley and Lloyd Bradley, they uh, are the halfbacks. Sam Owens on the left, and Shane Howells on the right. Ewan Vesey and Dan Howells are the centres, with Griff Davis uh, starting at fullback. On their bench, the replacements, Leon Sylvester, Sam Jervis, Chris Hosey, Connor Law, Jordan Lewis, Nathan Morgan, Sean Stacey and Josh Marshall. That's the lineup for Bryn Kethin. For San Haran, it's Will Thomas, Kethin Cashmore, Brandon Nelson. At the front row, Bill Carey, Richard Byers, Reese Dauncey, Lloyd Gregory and Yayan Pring. Leon Burton and Captain Scott Jones are the halfbacks. Alex Newbold on the left, Jack Pring on the right. Ross Pritchard, Lee Arthur at centre, Ryan Russell at fullback. Tom Harris, Jordan Hughes, Jack Dauncey, Yayan Evans, Owen Howe, Chris Osborne, Tom Priest and Tom Buckle. They complete the lineup for Than Haran. So the players. A wait for the uh, the nod to come out uh, from the bowels of the east stand to the limelight and uh, to the bright sunshine that we have today at the Principality Stadium. And I'm joined by uh, Welsh Rugby Union Community Director Geraint John. Geraint, welcome. It's been a tremendous week of rugby and it's not over yet. No, you're right. I think um, the last week has been something that we've worked hard on the union is sort of how do we get all our community clubs here at the stadium? And I think uh, the smiles on their faces show that uh, it is a wonderful event. And, you know, this is the second or the third game today. And I think uh, what we saw at the beginning with uh, Tonner and Crumlin in terms of the enjoyment there, but also for the local community as well, with all the town here, the number of supporters they have, I'm sure it'll be the same for this game with uh, Bryn Cathin and Tranara. And with what everything that's been going on over the last year, two years, uh, it's a rare day out and... Uh, it's an opportunity to, to enjoy and uh, to support your local teams. Uh, Brinkethin, in this instance, from uh, one side of uh, Bridgend and Anslan Haran, the other side of Bridgend, so to speak. Yeah, and I think, as you said, so they're not far apart. I think uh, there'll be that rivalry there between the, uh, between the two teams, and I think uh, the crowd here will also enjoy the game. And, uh, you know, they're seconds away from coming out to, the, uh, to this fantastic stadium. So the... That's the drum roll, and uh, here come the uh, dairymen of uh, San Haran on the left, and the Cherry and White so bring uh, on the left, on the right rather. And the mascots uh, for San Haran today are Johan Talbot from the uh, under 11 side and Finn Jones uh, from the under 8 uh, squad, and it's a uh, a proud day for them as well, and I wonder whether they will come back here one day to wear that uh, blue and black shirt of the, the Dairymen. Uh, it'll be worth making a note, I think, of the uh, the names of those two mascots, Ewan Talbot and Finn Jones. I think when you look at the teams coming out, you know, the mascots there, and you can see they're, they're waving to their probably their mums and dads, who are, and maybe even grandparents or great-grandparents in the stadium as well. I think sort of, uh, um, hopefully it will give them the inspiration to, one, carry on playing the game, and hopefully the inspiration to play here at this stadium as well. Yes, and we congratulate the mascots of uh, Brinkethin as well uh, on their selection to lead out uh, their team onto the hallowed turf of the Principality Stadium. So we're ready to get underway here, and the referee for this match is Mr Ed Brown, and he's supported by uh, Christoph Young, Rodri Morgan and Michael Sheehan, with uh, Rob Motter, the uh, fourth official should... Uh, his services be required. And he might be the busiest man, actually, if he has to take charge of the uh, the rolling subs, which came uh, thick and fast in that opening uh, encounter. 
in the uh, National Shield final. So first possession goes the way of uh, Bryn Kethin. The long kick downfield, uh, bringing a, a mistake from the uh, Sanharan captain, Scott Jones. Very experienced player, but then again, if you haven't had the experience of playing here at the Principality Stadium, I mean, I've seen uh, hardened veterans uh, drop a ball in the opening minutes. I think you'll see, uh, the f you know, the first couple of minutes of every single game we've had out here in the stadium, which was uh, youngsters and also with the, uh, even in the Premiership game last week, the first five minutes, there's the nerves out there, they want to do well, they want to start well, uh, and we tend to see the odd mistake happening, but uh, they'll get it out of their system now and I'm sure they'll uh, uh, get their skills ready for the rest of the game. So the first scrum of the match and the first uh, test uh, and it's uh, won by Sanharan but un well illegally done says the referee so uh, Leon Burton has to come back he's the scrum half for Sanharan who was on his way so the first 10-15 minutes probably will be spent sort of uh, testing one another and relative strength and weaknesses kick won't find a touch and it's uh, claimed by Jack Pring on the right for Sanharan and in go the forwards dug out by Leon Burton and snatched the stolen by Sanharan good work on the ground now here's an opportunity Kai Bradley is the scrum half and he's asked the forwards to take it up once more doesn't want to throw Bad ball out uh, to the backs. Great pass. That's opened the door for Shane Howells out on the far right. Sanharan though have uh, stolen it in this time. Scott Jones makes no mistake, but Ed Brown has seen an infringement, so calls him back to the mark. I think we saw a great left-handed pass there by uh, uh, by Ben Kethin ten there. I think sort of. Uh, um, I'm not sure whether it's because the sun's out. Both teams here, I think, will play with that uh, desire to move the ball, and I think uh, we'll see a, a quality game here. I think from a from a coaching perspective, from the two coaches, that's the way they like to play. They like to move the ball. They like to try and offload the the ball as well. So uh, um, that's the start. So. Uh, Let's see how the line-out goes now. Well, that's how Tonner and Crumlin approached the uh, the opening 20-30 uh, minutes, and certainly they just played at uh, quite a high tempo. But then, as the game progressed, you could see that uh, the pitch was taking its toll, the heat as well. I think we forget about that sometimes. You know, they they're playing on probably a field that they're not probably used to. But I think the desire to play, and I think that's the standard has been excellent in terms of club rugby here, and, uh, and I'm sure we'll see the same here again. Scott Jones is the outside half and captain and distributor for this uh, Sanharan side, coached by uh, Gareth Nicholas. Jack Pring testing the Brinkethian defences. Sam Owen is the left winger in the Cherry and Whites. The 16th appearance of the season. David Evans at hooker. Ball just tapped forward, so it's going to be a Brinkethian scrum and uh, on the basis of that first scrimmage we saw Sanharan showing good strength but they have to retain their composure at the same time as not to wheel through the uh, the 90 degrees I think it's a good opportunity here for the team now to sort of uh, bring Kath into attack if they can get the quality ball hold the scrum here um, you can see the way that they're lined up they got the width there ready to go and uh, hopefully we'll see something for us to start to play from from Rick in here Kathleen from Division 3 West uh, Central B and the Dairymen of Sanharan Division 3 East Central A and referee making his voice uh, heard and uh, passing the message on to the two front rows remember what I told you chaps in the uh, in the dressing rooms before coming out I'm going to ask you, please don't ask me what it is about the scrum here, because I'm probably the least <laughs> expert person here in the stadium to tell you what it should be. But, uh, you know, one taken against the head there for St. Adams. Good opportunity here. Moving it quickly into midfield, looking for uh, Ross Pritchard and Lee Arthur. That was Lee Arthur who went to ground, the number 13. ex Meisteg uh, Celtic joined this season. 
Sanharan there in numbers. Brinkathin not committing to the breakdown. Little hitch kick from uh, Sam, uh, from Lloyd Gregory. And this is Jack Thring. Five, ten metres out. Surely Brinkathin came in from the... Uh, from in front of the hindmost foot, that's why the referee's arm is outstretched and awarding a full penalty to Sanharan. Great offload there by uh, the Sanharan there to just get that attack going and be interesting now. Which what will they do? Will they go for the will they go for the three points? But I think uh, they feel their scrums on the on the upper hand here. They've gone for the scrum, so a real, real good attacking opportunity for Slanharan to get the uh, get the first points on the board. So Slanharan looking to uh, make the most of their scrum advantage. Last man down, locking the scrum. That's uh, Yayan Pring. Bring Kathin, get the shove on. Can't pretend, uh, pre prevent Pring from uh, picking up and charging through from the base of the last scrum, and that goes uh, Richard Byers his way in the shadow of the Bring Kathin posts into the shadows. Out quickly from Leon Burton. Another charge and solid defending once more. Bit of a scramble. Ewan VC, the Brinkethian centre. Shevslan Haran back another metre or two. They'll have to start all over again. So there it is. Won't go far. Brinkethian very well organised right across the field. On tippy toes to the blind side it goes. Arthur was there, the centre. Has he got there? The referee, Mr. Brown, is there on the spot. I think on that good, you know, excellent ball retention there by Slanharan, but very well done by Brinketh in there to keep him uh, keep the ball off the line. And obviously here we have the the dropout law uh, this uh, this season, so the dropout uh, from uh, uh, from the try line to uh, Brinketh in. And Brinketh in's. Out at half, Lloyd Bradley sends it towards the far touchline, doesn't gain territory. And it's been interesting, that new law this season, Geraint. We've seen uh, players kick it straight downfield, but there is a, a rare opportunity, perhaps, for the opposition outside half, if he's well-placed, to send a, a drop goal the other way. So it's no surprise that we see now uh, players kicking for the touchlines or for the wide uh, uh, areas rather than straight downfield yeah i think teams have actually looked at it a little bit closer the initial one was as you said just kick it as far as you possibly can if you didn't get it we've seen quite a few drop goals but they're trying to go towards the touchline now tonight got a great opportunity again yeah four players over on the right hand side it's uh, ross pritchard that asks the first question for san haran ball doesn't quite go to hand richard byers has to recover Sanharan will have to backtrack uh, for some 5-10 metres, but they will get the put in at the scrum. That's unfortunate for Brinketh in there. Just nudge the ball forward in the contact area. I think Brinketh has actually shown really good, excellent uh, line defence there. Coming up very, very quickly, not allowing uh, Sanharan to get, get the ball out wide. So, uh, um, But again, it's still another opportunity for Sanharan. I think sort of having been down here now for the last few minutes, they've had this would be their third scrum now in the in the uh, attacking 22. They probably need to score, so uh, they will be looking to get those points. And uh, and again for Bryn Kethin, if they can come away here without allowing Sanharan in, they'll probably think they've uh, uh, had their success right now as well. Yeah, it's the first final at the Principality Stadium for uh, Sanharan. In the quarterfinals, they uh, defeated uh, Sonzi Uplands by 24 points to 13, although they played half that game with 14 men. Four yellow cards uh, for the Dairymen in that match. The semi finals played at Ton Mauer against Aberavon Green Stars, 23 18, but the Green Stars led 12 0 at half time. And apparently, Gareth Nicholas uh, stripped the uh, paintwork off the uh, change room walls at uh, half time, as is his wont. And, uh, very interesting reading Gareth Nicholas' uh, thoughts and reports uh, post-match. 
Great effort on the narrow side, linking up were Leon Burton and Jack Pring. And that's the opening score then for Than Haran. The pressure mounting and the pressure telling in the end on the Brinketh in try line. You know, another great scrum by Than Haran there, and I think sort of they utilise that blind set exceptionally well. We see that sort of uh, start to play with the 8-9, but, uh, you know, they had the upper hand on the scrum there. They managed to turn it slightly, which have provided that space for for Leon Burton at uh, nine there to uh, to then draw the winger in to give the space to uh, Jack Bring to score. I think uh, they'll come away exceptionally happy with that. They put the pressure on Bring Keth in. Um, they, that was their third scrum and to come away then with a try and hopefully get this conversion over to go seven points in the lead would be a, an excellent start for uh, for the uh, Dairy Men and Gareth Nicholas's team. So this kicks him eight metres in from touch as uh, Scott Jones sends it high, but it just drops uh, to the right on the right-hand upright. And that's the opening score on the psychological advantage as well that goes with it. And Than Haran lead Bryn Kethin by five points to nil early on in this uh, National Bowl final. And Kathin restart and drop the ball just beyond the 10 meter line and they've managed to reclaim it at the at the restart Kai Bradley is at scrum half good opportunity here I think sort of to get uh, for bring Kathy now will they go for the points or will they get their first attack in the uh, in the opposition's 22 so uh, interesting call we, uh, you know Quite far out here, but obviously they got confidence in uh, in the kicker there to uh, to get the three points immediately after the uh, the try by Van Halen. Well, if the opportunity presents yourself, and uh, judging on uh, balance of the uh, uh, the scrum, then you have to take your points when they are on offer, and especially as early as this in the game. And I think if you know the kicking, I will say this: this has been one of. Uh, um, key skill that we've looked at this week just from a department and staff and people on the sideline talking I think the kicking skills of people have been exceptional you saw the game of the previous game well wow, Josh Honor fantastic didn't miss a kick and two of the conversions were right uh, out on the sidelines and uh, I remember the kicks from some of the junior boys as well uh, equally from the touch lines so they've clearly been uh, practicing that uh, that skill let's see how uh, Sam Owen fares here not a bad effort and you were right there I think sort of we remember sort of uh, I think it was a week ago when uh, um, Sandaf played uh, in the uh, first game of the tournament when they had to kick that conversion to win the game in the in the youth game so uh, the kicking has been exceptional that, that uh, kick then uh, from the Brinketh in play and wasn't too far away so I'm sure uh, they will kick their goals later on again uh, and what we've seen also is that a team may race into a lead only for as you say Tlandaf to come back and clinch it 26-24 I think it was uh, reason I remember it was against my old club Lampeter <laughs> and Lampeter will be here again uh, over the weekend their ladies are in action so a chance for me to uh, to raise my voice perhaps a little louder but it's great to see all the minor clubs have been given an opportunity. They've won the right, of course, to represent their clubs uh, here at the uh, Principality Stadium. So Bryn Kethin looking to get back on terms here. Forwards pile in, but it's not clean ball yet for Kai Bradley. Again, he doesn't want bad ball. He doesn't want to send bad ball out to... Uh, Lloyd Bradley, Clan Haran contesting every scrap of possession. And Lee Arthur, the centre, was in there as well. So the Dairy Men are uh, one short in midfield at the moment. As Bryn Kethin have it, midway between the Clan, uh, the Clan Haran 10 metre line and 22. Out it goes onto the narrow side once more and sucking in. Uh, three four Tlan Haran defenders including uh, Lee Arthur the center the long-haired uh, bearded center three-quarter straight running from Ewan Vesey 
and penalized for holding on to the ball on the ground the referees have been particularly vigilant on that aspect of play throughout the week and I think that was Lloyd Gregory the seven then from uh, Tlan Harden straight away as soon as that player went down uh, tried to place the ball back uh, right over the top then stayed on his feet to get that ball to allow uh, a penalty there so uh, um, as you said the games as they'll increase this uh, this afternoon I think we'll see a little bit more intensity in that contact area it's sort of uh, it was pretty noticeable I thought last week in the uh, championship and the premiership games as the game progressed and I think we, we may see that again this afternoon with maybe even more intensity in the contact game when uh, we uh, have Penalta and Triorki here for the uh, for the final game today so Van Haran with a line out on Bring Kathleen's 10 meter line. And guarding the back there is the tight head prop forward Brandon Nelson and aiding and abetting Bill Carey to try and uh, retain possession, which uh, Sanharan have failed to do. Connor Buckle, the ever present Connor Buckle this season at loose head for Sanharan. Sets it up this time. Bring Kathleen, think about going wide. Pass not forward to uh, Ewan Vesey. Scrum half. Almost broke through around the fringes, but it was well read by Sanharan, and they're on the counter here through uh, Bill Carey. Looked for the pass back inside, came off uh, a Bryn Kethin player. So it'll be a scrum down Sanharan ball, unless the uh, referee's assistant has uh, something else to say. I think they just had a little chat there. Was that a deliberate knock on or not? But uh, um, both working together uh, well there just to give the scrum to Tlan So uh, quick turnover ball then. You could look at could they have given the ball to the uh, to wing Jack Pring a little bit earlier? But uh, they still have possession now in the in the scrum now. So there'll be a, a lull here, and as much as that there's an injury to one of the Brinkathin players, I think it could well be uh, Rhys Bridgman. The back row forward and I think sort of uh, just in the game now all players a little bit of a break a little bit of a just regathering their thoughts of what they can do next in terms of Clan Haddon from an attacking perspective now bring Kethin from a defensive perspective bring Kethin will want to again keep them out as much as they possibly can to try and get back down to the uh, uh, Clan 22 yeah, it's a proud record that bring Kethin uh, have they've not lost a competitive game in in two years and they run teams from under sevens up to 17s and two senior teams as well as a mixed ability touch rugby side and uh, I wouldn't have perhaps have made note of that but for the fact that we saw a cracking match here last night Geraint I know you were involved with that on the mixed ability uh, rugby invitational side against the Sony Gladiators I think last night I think sort of uh, epitomized what we're, what we're about as a sport you know sort of we talk about you know a jersey for all of, and I think last night shows that there is a jersey for all and there's an opportunity for all as well so Sanharan with ball in hand miss move in midfield and bringing in Jack Pring in from the the right wing and they have the numbers out wide as uh, Yayan Pring looks to get the ball away but it's lost forward I just mentioned the lasting image I will have of that mixed ability game last night was young uh, uh, Jack Paulus from uh, Sonzi uh, from the uh, invitational side and uh, led on by his father and guided by his father uh, he was a hooker um, uh, partially sighted as far as I can tell or perhaps uh, blind even but there was room and he thoroughly enjoyed uh, uh, his moment in the uh, in the sunshine he felt the sunshine on his back last night well I think you just saw him on the field not only the excitement of the young lad himself but also the dad the proud dad of uh, being on the field with him and then for him to go off the field waving there and uh, you know rugby has actually helped him and may have saved him you know and, you, and that, that may be a strong sort of uh, phrase to say but it's it's brought a meaning for him he's enjoying it out there and uh, a lot of people said to me last night you know they they came to see the game and that was probably one of the biggest moments last night was the father and son moment on the field certainly was and a lot of uh, father son combinations in this uh, lineup as well uh, the outside half uh, for Sanharan Scott Jones is the son of Kevin Jones the uh, the coach Lee Arthur probing asking questions ball is tied in for a split second there as Sanharan wanted to get it away quickly into the hands of Lloyd Gregory and 
pounding that uh, Brinketh in try line. Slanharan come again looking for the second score, and it's Gregory in the thick of it, the number seven. Arthur steps back inside, scragged and uh, hauled down eventually by the shirt tails, and Brinketh in win themselves a penalty. And again, as you said, sort of uh, from a uh, um, family perspective, I, th I believe if I'm right saying you got Kai and Lloyd Bradley, the nine and ten, who are, who are brothers, and and Pete is the coach um, um, for Brinkethin as well. So another sort of uh, family group of uh, of people. And uh, um, apparently, I have been reminded reminded that I did play against Pete uh, once uh, upon a time <laughs> when he played for my Steg. So, uh, uh, but he couldn't remember the score. So I'm taking that as a positive that uh, I might have been on the winning team. <laughs> Yeah, lots of memories, certainly, and when you think of my stake and where they are now, you know, and uh, lots of clubs have uh, faced difficult times and fallen on hard times, but when you see uh, a lot of the teams that have been represented here this week and uh, they run junior sides, uh, anything, as I say now, for uh, Brinkethin from 7 to 17, and uh, that's encouraging, certainly, from a Welsh Rugby Union perspective. Yeah, and I think we'll, we'll talk about Brinketh in a moment in terms of... Uh, what else they've done at their club but it is uh, it is a fantastic community club and the way that they actually redesigned their even their sort of the clubhouse and what they've got on the sideline as well so uh, it is truly a community club up oh. looking for the pop-up pass not going to hand and it's a penalty for Bryn Kethin so just to add to that I think you know one of the things um, people are, we actually use the uh, Brinkethin Rugby Club quite a bit from a staff and a community department perspective, just sort of uh, use it as meeting places and office spaces as well. They, uh, they have redesigned their club. It's uh, not just a club for rugby people. Um, as you said, they've got minis, juniors, mixed ability, male, female uh, opportunities there at the club, but also is an opportunity for uh, other members of the community to come into the club, to have classes, to have meetings, social events as well. And I think that is the modern day rugby club. It's not a rugby club just for when people play and people train. It's about, you know, one of our key strategy and our aims is how do we make our rugby clubs real, real hubs of the community moving forward. And, and all secured uh, through the community asset to transfer from uh, Bridgen County Council. That's right. So that's Bryn Kethin. And speaking of uh, hub of the community and what have you, well, the. Uh, the pre-match meal from uh, uh, St. Harren perspective was held at the Angel Inn, I gather, on Thursday night. So we've got a few bottles in the, uh, in the crates awaiting the, the boys. I think they might wait until, uh, until after this game is over. But a tremendous uh, camaraderie and community spirit uh, felt in the uh, St. Harren squad. And, uh, Gareth Nicholas in amongst them, I dare say, the coach, adding his pearls of wisdom. Snapped up quickly, and the loose ball and giving chase down on the left here. That's uh, Sam Owen putting pressure on, and uh, he's done well. Setting it up uh, between the 10-meter line and 22 of Llanharan, and it's uh, a rare visit to the Llanharan half from the uh, Brinketh inside. It's there somewhere. Slipped back and forwards, take it up once more. To Bradley ask the forwards to take it up again now then it might go out this time to uh, Lloyd Bradley pass not going to hand and Sanharan are there but Sam Owen over from the left is still chasing down the uh, Sanharan ball carriers making his presence felt the referee Brown calls them back Good opportunity here for Bryn Kethin. You know, they managed to keep the ball a little bit there and they tried that little chip over the top. Uh, didn't quite come off, but, um, you know, Tlanada knocking the ball on there and they got another opportunity here. And both sides open from here on the right-hand side and the left-hand side to uh, uh, to create something. So Bryn Kethin fullback standing immediately directly behind uh, the uh, the outside half and there he is getting a 
a bump for his pains. That's uh, Griff Davis, a uh, maths teacher at a school, Gavin Gumraig, uh, Llan Gunwid. 116 points for him this season. And a lot of support for him from the uh, from the Welsh Medium School in uh, Llan Gunwid. Then Cathin driving forward. Going without the ball, but this is the best position so far for the Cherry and Whites. Still chasing that... Uh, Elusive try, 5-0 then for Sanharan. It remains despite all their efforts down the far end. Yeah, and I think sort of, you know, Sanharan would be thinking we should have had maybe a few more points than what we've got on the board at the moment. And uh, um, But they'll still feel very confident in the way that they've started this uh, first uh, this first half. And, uh, and we know under Gareth in terms of the, the way they play and uh, Andy Price, the other coach there, that uh, they'll continue to sort of be in the game they'll continue to be very technically correct as well and uh, um, they'll <laughs> feel very confident as well reading Gareth Nicholas's post-match reports uh, is like time to decipher the enigma code you know he's got a way with words but I think his reports may well have been ghosted by John Grisham actually I think he's a great you know he's a fantastic coach when you look at actually his the you know past history where where he's actually coached his knowledge of the game and uh, he was also a fantastic player as well when he was at uh, as I recalled it then the South Glamorgan Institute of Higher Education which is Cardiff Met now and Gareth's a formidable player when he was a, a back row forward and has done exceptionally well here at San Haran bringing a lot of local boys back back to the club creating that again as we said about Brinketh in that local community spirit which is what uh, community rugby is all about and it's uh, very very pleasing to see Clenharan being competitive again and also in finals again yeah I remember Gareth also with the uh, college sides and uh, lending his support there and uh, adding uh, all his knowledge So line out for Bryn Cathin just inside the uh, Thanharan 10 meter line, secured down the front. It's always a safe bet, isn't it, when you uh, throw the ball down into the front of the line out that you have uh, an opportunity to reclaim possession, but perhaps uh, your attacking options are limited as a consequence. And goes Bridgman to form the bridge as it happens. But look how quickly Llanharan are there to the breakdown. Preventing anything from uh, developing. And that was the loose head prop, Connor Buckle, once again. And Brinkethin slowly but surely finding their feet. It's advantage to Llanharan. The referee, uh, Brown's arm is still outstretched and he will call them back. Although perhaps Lanharan would have preferred a, a line out down near the Brinketh in 22. Another steal on the floor there. I'm not sure. It had to be one of the back row players again from Lanharan, whether it was Lloyd or whether that was uh, Rhys Dornsey there. But I think, uh, again, another steal, another opportunity for, uh, uh, for Lanharan to get back into uh, Brinketh's half. But uh, Brinketh would be disappointed with that. They, uh, sort of, they had the possession, they kept possession for a period of time and then just allowed the St. Harren player just to sort of sneak in very, very quickly to steal that ball then. So after that energetic uh, start uh, from St. Harren, things have quietened down somewhat. And keeping the powder dry perhaps for the second half. Good take. And forwards will take it up again from here surely no back safely into the hands of the uh, outside half Lloyd Bradley sends it way downfield on the counter it's uh, Ryan Russell to run the ball back over halfway Burton couldn't get the ball away first time now then this is Ross Pritchard Beating the first tackle, beating the second man, not the best of passes. It's a wild pass into midfield. Russell is putting pressure on 
quickly. Brinketh in defence and finds good touch deep in Brinketh in territory. Another good, good, good offload and attack by St. Haddon as well. I think they've done that a couple of times now in their attacking movement. Just to, it helps in terms from getting across that gain line. It helps in terms of creating opportunities as well. And a lovely little kick there as well to put uh, the pressure now on uh, Brinketh in Temi just from their own try line. And they'll have to secure a good ball here in the line out. Yes, and Haran have hinted that they uh, have gained the ascendancy early on, but you shouldn't uh, discount Bringeth in. They were 10 nil down against Fairwater in the semi final, but they recovered to win that one by 17 points to 15. Lloyd Gregory turns on his heels, tackled from behind, but he's made the ball available. Owen Howe is on for Bill Carey for Than Haran at lock forward. He's wearing 20. Standing clear here. Great work by Than Haran. And they've got their second try, have they? Yes. Referee Brown's arm is in the air. And it's the number eight uh, forward for Than Haran, Yayan Pring, who crosses the Brinketh in whitewash to double Than Haran's account. Good angle there by. Uh by the Sanara number eight, then Yeyan Pring coming off uh, from, the, from the nine, but also good movement by uh, Sanara there, working one side, then going back to the other side, attacking at speed, looking to try and attack the spaces there as well. So uh, uh, an excellent try there by Yeyan, and uh, I'm sure the uh, conversion now will go over to give them a 12-point lead. Scott Jones to the uh, left of the upright. Slots a second conversion and St. Haran lead by uh, well, Slots' his first conversion, I should say. It's 12 points to nil and adding a conversion to Yayan Pring's try. It's the Pring boys that have got St. Haran onto the score sheet with tries. It's uh, Jack and now Yayan. Yayan, uh, former captain of Collega Kamoy that won the WIU College uh, League title. Well, when was it? Some three years ago, I think. 2019, perhaps. 18-19. So Brinkethin hit the purple patch a few minutes ago, but uh, Soth and Haran turned them over. And now they trail by 12 points. Lloyd Gregory can't get the pass away. Retains possession and uh, sets it up again. So Haran, full of running, Pring once again. Lloyd Gregory offloads to Lee Arthur, one more pass. Couldn't free his hands and lost forward. And again, some excellent rugby by Sen Haran. You've got to say that in terms of one passing in the contact area, passing in the tackle area, people on the shoulders of, uh, of, the, of the ball carrier again. And uh, it's creating opportunities for them. And I think sort of... Uh, you know, they'll be ruining the missed opportunity again there if they just had that patience to keep the ball. But they are showing those initiatives in attack and actually breaking the Brinkethin defence. And I think for Brinkethin now, the next 10 minutes before half-time is to have that little bit of calmness, composure, and they need to try and get, make sure that they, uh, they get back into the opposition half, into San Aaron's half, and uh, hopefully create some opportunities for themselves in the next uh, 10 minutes. And Haran uh, penalised for an infringement on the far side of the scrum. Was Will Thomas uh, being penalised perhaps for taking his man down or turning his man inwards? Kathin forwards uh, slowly late into the line out just to keep uh, San Haran guessing. It's Sam Shillibier directly in front of the referee. He was seven for Brinkathin. Let's see what they can do here from the set piece. Nicely worked out 
wide into the hands of uh, Sam Owen had to reach back for that one momentum lost for a split second Shilibia offers himself Bradley on the narrow side Owen into the 22 oh great work good thinking by Sam Owen that's Morgan Griffiths the captain five six meters short is this the chance now then four bring Kathleen to claw one back It's on its way. The kick out wide as Sanharan defend narrowly. Patience required. Oh, great vision there. And it brings a try for Sanharan. Uh, bring Kathleen's right wing, and that's Shane Howells. 12 tries coming into this match, and that's his 13th. Great opportunities there, and well executed. And uh, the kick there from. Uh, from Lloyd Bradley across the field he saw that there was space out there he saw that uh, Shane Howells was unmarked out there on the in the wide channel there and uh, it gets Brinkethin on, on the board and I think sort of the other interplays around the uh, down the touchline um, on the near side here on the left hand side was another ec excellent piece of uh, offloading and support work by Brinkethin and uh, now they're on the board and I think sort of uh, great opportunities by them great score and now uh, it uh, It'll help it to the end of the end of this first half. It brings them right back into the game. Lloyd Bradley adds the conversion, and Brinketh in finally then onto the uh, scoreboard here. They're on seven. They're back within one score of the Tlanharan total. Brinketh in seven, Tlanharan twelve. And good interplay, good uh, intelligent play by Sam Owen on the left here. Cut back inside to create the space out right on the touchline for Morgan Griffiths initially and he was in and he was used and got involved quite a few times not just them every time he passed got back in support looked for the ball again so uh, a lot of hard work by uh, uh, by Sam Owens the left wing from Brinketh in them so that'll have given the Cherry and White some confidence and they fancy themselves as underdogs are coming into this match despite their proud an impressive unbeaten record over the last two seasons that won't go far Ryan Russell keeping his eyes on the ball now then Thanharan without a fullback and some uh, neat out of the back passing and that's why I've liked this week in terms of you know you sort of uh, these players here have been probably they look at other players doing these things, trying different types of skills, and they're not scared to have a go here. Even though it's a final, they're, they're trying to keep the ball alive, trying to keep the ball moving as well. And, you know, if that gone into hand and stayed in hand then, then Brinkethin would away. But uh, in Outland had, an, again, another opportunity for them on the halfway line, opportunity to attack on the right-hand side here with uh, Ross Pritchard, who's on the, on the right-hand side here, who's... Uh, Father was Graham Pritchard, who uh, not only played for St. Haddon, but also played for Cardiff many, many years ago. Actually, played as a scrum after myself once win as well. well. If you are to display your skills, this is a place to display them. And St. Haddon now going through their repertoire. And was that uh, scrum half uh, Leon Burton with the reverse pass? Again, I'm sure they'll have a little little drinks break here. I know there's an injury here. Hopefully the player will be fine here. But uh, again, just to sort of calm the nerves, make sure they're ready now for the last uh, few minutes of this uh, first half, which has been an excellent first half. And I think both teams have tried to move the ball. They tried to sort of keep the game alive, offloaded in contact. Um, and, uh, you know, yes, Len Haddon would be happy going in like this. Perhaps want, wanted a little bit more score, but uh, bring Keth in. No, they're right back into the game. And... Uh, have, uh, have an opportunity to uh, put uh, San Harden under pressure. Good crowd in the east stand in the middle tier, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the rugby on the bank holiday weekend here at the Principality Stadium. And I think that's been the nice, one of the nicest parts as well. I think when we saw it earlier, you know, Tonna playing uh, against Crumlin, the the local town here in full force, and we've seen the, you know, you see the likes of Brinkethin and San Harden here today, and we'll see later on all the. Uh, the town of uh, Panatta Triorki and you know an opportunity to come down support your local local players your local community come in your buses meet in your clubhouses beforehand come and experience the Principality Stadium which uh, as we all say we think is the is the best stadium in the world and uh, and we've got players playing on the best stadium in the world this week 
Good shove there by uh, Bryn Kethin. Morgan Griffiths digging it out. And having a go again. Was, uh, Shane Howells out on the right looking to turn his man. Good ripping work by Clan Haran. And they now on the front foot. Just inside the Bryn Kethin half. Dig out by uh, Lee Arthur. Kethin Kashmo. Here's the hooker. Sanharan finishing this first half with a flourish. It's going to be a second try for Yayan Pring. Good support play this time by the number eight. Just as Brinkethin looked to be breaking out of their own half, the ball turned over. The referee, Ed Brown, just uh, confirming that the try can be allowed. And no sooner have Brinkethin uh, scored their opening try that uh, Sanharan have uh, once again recovered well and scored a try of their own. And a good attacking option down that blindside movement there as well. Good in, good passing, good skills, ball out in front. Obviously they stole the ball first from Brinkethin, but a good run by the wing then to pass on the, they had the two on one with a full back, pass it inside to Yeh Pring who could uh, get over the try line. And uh, a very timely score there for San Adam, but uh, very well executed and uh, very good handling skills by the uh, by the San Haran side. Yeah, good time to score just before the break. That's uh, San Haran's third try of this opening 40 minutes. Five metres in from touch and five metres outside the 22. Good effort. It's a great conversion right from uh, the far touchline by the uh, Sanharan outside half and captain Scott Jones over a, a decade uh, at uh, Sanharan. Scott Jones, and that is the final act of the first half. An entertaining first half, it has to be said. Four tries in that opening 40, three of them to the dairymen of Sanharan, and they lead Brinketh in the Cherry and Whites by 19 points to 7.
Welcome back to the Principality Stadium where Bryn Kethin trailed Sanharan by 19 points to 7 at half time. Uh, second try for Yayan Pring just before the break. And what a better time to score than uh, just before the break. And uh, Sanharan find themselves in the ascendancy. And Bryn Kethin, uh, Geraint John, have it all to do in this uh, second half. Yeah, it will be a difficult second half, I think, for Bryn Kethin if. Uh, but, uh you know, as you said earlier, you know, they had the opportunities in the, the previous round where they were behind and came back and uh, um, they will need to have this four, first score this second half. But uh, you have to give compliments to Slen Harren. They, they moved the ball well, they took their chances. They have the upper hand slightly in the scrum area here, but uh, you could see the Brinkethin coach talk to his players there at half time, giving them advice what to do. So I'm looking forward to see how they come out now this uh, the start of the second half. So Bryn Kethin uh, taking the opportunity at uh, half time to uh, bring on fresh legs and we'll catch up with those replacements as uh, play progresses. Lee Arthur coming through, testing the Bryn Kethin defence. But it's going to be a scrum for the Cherry and Whites. And packing down now at loose head will be uh, Sam Jervis for Bryn Kethin. And in place of Sam Shillibier, we now have Nathan Morgan wearing number 21 and number 22 at uh, scrum half is Sean Stacey in place of Kai Bradley. So scrum in midfield and all the Brinkethin backs bar one. And he being the right winger Shane Howells over on the far side. That's a penalty then for Brinkethin. Let's see what they do with this one. They're eyeing the post, I think. It's too early to be uh, adventurous if they can keep that uh, scoreboard ticking over and keep the gap to uh, to a reasonable, uh, manageable deficit. And I think that's what you said. You're right there in what you said there, Wayne. I think keep the scoreboard uh, ticking over. And I think to, to start the second half, they've made you know the three changes there uh, and you know, the probably tactical changes to get get themselves back in the game straight away now in the first couple of minutes they have a penalty the three points here now will just hopefully put them uh, nine points behind and uh, they'll give them that uh, that confidence for the start of the second half so in midfield some uh, 30 meters out and they make no mistake and they're into double figures I think one of the things we, we've talked about this week, sort of, we talked, I talked about it then, sort of like, you always feel confident these days when you see kickers putting the tee down and they're going to kick the, kick the ball. I think years ago we all said, oh, yes, you know, pressure kick, a difficult kick, but uh, the way we've seen people kick, and we, we've already talked about it uh, earlier on in the first half, I think uh, is exceptional. And, uh, you know, those three points and those two points of conversions keep the scoreboard ticking over, and that's a good start for Brinkethin. So Lloyd Bradley closes the gap to uh, to six, one score. Brinkethin 13, Sanharan 19. Ball dropping in midfield, giving good chase was Dan Howells, but it's uh, Sanharan on the front foot through Jack Pring. And 
I think we've gone ahead of ourselves uh, here. It's 19-10, uh, not 19-13. So it's uh, still two scores. And as you can see, both teams are making a few changes right now. When I think sort of uh, we'll catch up with them, as you said, sort of, uh, um, you know, Tlanharan are making a couple of changes as well. People coming in and uh, um, hopefully to strengthen the scrum area here for uh, for Tlanhar and put uh, Brinkethin under pressure. Brinkethin, as you say, Geraint under pressure there, but they will get the put in here. That's a powerful looking unit, powerful looking front row now that uh, Tlanharan have. On has come uh, Jack Dornsey wearing uh, 18 for Brandon Nelson on the tight head. Then we'll have to look to try and get this ball in as quickly as possible, but also get it away from the scrum as quickly as possible. Back to the eight feet, which they've done. Expertly done, Bradley. Quickly into midfield. Neat little kick that's meant for Shane Howells to chase, but it's well covered by uh, Sanharan. This is their replacement, Tom Priest, who scored a try against the Aberavon Green Stars in the uh, semi-final. Back safely into the hands of the captain, Scott Jones, who sends it away into touch, just uh, a few inches short of uh, his own 10-metre line. I think Kathy will be pleased with the start of the second half. You know, they've kept uh, the rugby in the Sanharan half, and they'll put pressure on them again now. They'll make sure that they can go for a probably secure ball at this line-out. They've got uh, forwards out in the back line as well, so they look to attack. Will they attack down? immediately off the line out or will they go out wide bring Kathin reducing the numbers at the line out as they charge up in center field the gap opens up uh, for Dan Howells to Shane Howells and he's over for a second try that's a well constructed try straight from the line out the shortened line out ball moved quickly into midfield and you can see the smiles on the Brickethin faces. They've probably been practicing that this week. Um, you know, taking the ball off the line out, attacking immediately in that sort of a channel off the, off the line out and coming back blind as well with dummy runners going around the corner. And uh, again, very well executed. People running the right angles, people timing their runs really correctly. And a great two on one to finish off as well with a left hand pass for, uh, for Brickethin to score. And uh, right now they're right back in it. And uh, the confidence will be coming back very, very highly up in, uh, in Brickethin's thoughts. So let's see how Lloyd Bradley fares with uh, this attempt. Just checking that uh, the ball is in line with the uh, far upright, perhaps. Struck it well, extremely well. It was good that he did uh, check his line of sight because he has uh, brought Brinkethin back within reach of Sanharan. Expertly converted try there by Bradley. Brinkethin 17, Sanharan 19. Make no mistake, they were 10 nil down in the semi final, but they claw the way back to clinch. That semi-final against Fairwater at uh, Pennegraig, and they won by 17 points to 15. Well taken by Ryan Russell. Shane Howell's giving chase and he's uh, helped along there by uh, Jordan Lewis, I think it is. Wearing 24, Bryn Cathin. So it's game on now, just uh, two points the difference when it looked as if uh, Sanharan were or had gained the upper hand. Bryn Cathin have struck back. Gethin Kashmo is the hooker. Penalty Sanharan. The 
So now then, what's the decision here? Do you go for the post? Do you have confidence? Yes, you do. He is having he's having a go, and um, you know, halfway line, middle of the field. So um, and they need some points here, Slan Harren. It's sort of uh, um, obviously the confidence in the kicker here. But, um, you know, Brinkethin, you can see just in their body language, the way they're attacking the ball, the way they're going for them in, in defence now. This start has really given them that confidence that uh, and the feeling that uh, they can obviously win this game. And as you said, that semi-final coming back against uh, uh, Fairwater, you know, probably will be in some of their minds and probably the coach reminded them of that at halftime as well. But I think also the changes as well, getting new, new blood on the, on the field, getting fresh... Uh, Fresh legs on the field as well has also helped them. But uh, Lanharan here will look to, uh, yes, get these three points, but also they will want to now try and make sure that uh, some of the rugby's played in that Brinketh in half. Scott Jones just inside the Brinketh in half. Right-footed, sends it on its way. It's dipping under the crossbar, but he's got the distance. Not quite the height on that occasion. Don't know, he looks as if he's got new boots. Perhaps if he'd kept his old ones, he might have got there, Geraint. Do you know more about kicking than I do? I wouldn't even have attempted it. <laughs> but um, interesting there, you know, I like the endeavour there by Brinketh in running the ball back, looking to run the ball back, but then, uh, you know, they wanted to send that ball uh, a long way down into Clan Hall and South, but uh, unfortunately that ball's gone straight into touch now, and it's uh, Clan Allen's first opportunity the second half to, to do something in, uh, in an attacking form. That's the first element completed as Slenharan get the drive on at the heels. That's Leon Burton cajoling, guiding. Direction, accuracy is what's required here. Slowly but surely, Slenharan are moving forward. Stopped once. They regroup and bring Kethin back there to uh, prevent anything further from developing, but they've uh, collapsed that more by the looks of it. And are penalised as a consequence. And now no, here's another big decision. Do they go for points and keep the points uh, ticking over? Or, you know, they had a good line out there, good driving line out, and should they go for it again? And uh, that's what it seems likely they're going to go for. Yes. Good kick into the corner. And uh, I think we all know what's coming. But um, then again, they may have a surprise move up their hand and uh, attack either around the fringes of the back or uh, around the front. Yeah, we've seen a, a few... Uh, Complicated moves come off around the front, usually of the line out, but uh, Tlanharan trusting to the power of their forward unit. But Brinketh in uh, a wise to the threat. And they've sacked that more play on, says uh, referee Ed Brown. So the work is not done yet uh, for the Brinketh in forwards. And one or two backs in there as well, the outside half, Lloyd Bradley. <laughs> Let's get him out of the way, says. Uh, the number 18 forward. That's Jack Dauncey falling onto the ball. No, ball lost forward. And Brinketh in breathe again. Great hit there by the Brinketh in defence there. They saw the runner coming in. Uh, they saw the uh, Slenhar and Richard Byers uh, looking to carry on with that ball. I think it was him. And um, great, great hit then to disrupt the ball from, uh, from his hands and uh, for him to knock the ball forward. So Richard Byers, the lock forward, is down, and uh, Rhys Dornsey is also on his haunches over on the left here, just taking a breather, perhaps, Dornsey. Richard Byers in uh, more discomfort, but that's a familiar uh, image this week. The leg stretch, the calf stretch. And I think we'll see that in the second half. You know, I know they can have uh, many changes, and I think players will come on and off, and I think sort of... Uh, Sometimes we'll see the, the pitch take its toll a little bit on the, on the players in terms of uh, not being used to this uh, wide field and uh, large field and uh, playing the game. But um, you've got to give credit to the players and all to the coaches and all the staff and volunteers who've been working with these teams and uh, who've been out there every Tuesday, every Thursday, helping the players, progress the players. And uh, this is their reward for these two teams today. And, uh, you know, next year we'll uh, hopefully have you know, new teams again next year to our um, Road to Principality campaign. So 
So Van Haran making two further substitutions. Number 17 coming on and taking his place at uh, lock forward. Here's uh, Jordan Hughes. So pressure on the Brinkathin scrum, but they managed to work it clear yet again. Good work by the uh, back row forward, and that would have been the captain, Morgan Griffiths. Oh, <laughs> expertly done by uh, Bradley, as far as uh, Tom Priest on the charge. Then this is Ryan Russell. That could drop anywhere, but it falls straight into the hands of uh, Sam Owen. <laughs> Huge groan from the uh, Brinkethin contingent in the East stand. It's a penalty against Brinkethin in midfield. Well spotted there by the referee and touches if they were working together there. And I think um, when the 10 kicked the ball there, great sort of uh, work by the 10 to get out of uh, out of the traffic there, of the, the pressure put on by Tlenharam. But when he kicked that ball, there was a couple of players there who were ahead of him who uh, chased the kick, which is why the referees come back now for... Uh, uh, for a penalty fence and uh, Tlenhara are going to go for the three points here and uh, um, hopefully get that score uh, get scoreboard moving in their uh, in their heart much uh, closer to the post this time than for Scott Jones immediately in front of the posts but still he needs to make sure that the ball is placed uh, solidly on the kicking tee because it's too close to call at the moment. Brinkethin 17, Van Haran 19. Right footed and over it goes and takes uh, Van Haran beyond the 20 point mark. It's uh, Brinkethin 17, Van Haran 22. That's nip and tuck, isn't it? It is, and I think sort of, you know, San, uh, San Haran be pleased to get those three points, but Brink Hethen will also look at it going, well, just another try we need, a try will get, get us back on equal score, and uh, they'll be looking now to get back into San Haran's half, but uh, um, right now it's very difficult to say which, uh, which way this game is going to go. Brink Hethen, worthy winners of the Worthington Welsh Districts Cup back in uh, 2006, that was played at Sardis Road because the Millennium Stadium wasn't available, so this is their first opportunity at uh, the Principality Stadium as uh, Scott Jones pins them back a bouncing ball kept in play by Shane Howells uh, Griff Davis couldn't quite uh, latch onto it and it'll be a San Haran throw in quickly taken knocked forward Good play there again by Tlen Haran, especially by uh, the Tlen Haran uh, 10 there, Scott Jones, who put that uh, long kick into the Brinketh in half. And the winger chasing back there, Brinketh knew that he had to keep that ball in field, otherwise it would have been the 50 22 and it would have been Tlen Haran's ball. But uh, unfortunately, couldn't quite keep it in, and it's still the Tlen Haran line out here and right uh, in, their, uh, uh, in their half. To the back it goes, considering perhaps too far for a driving line out. The ball would have been. Uh aimed at the front of the line out to possibly for that to uh, to come off but in midfield it's getting Kashmo the hooker lays the platform Jones the captain out to uh, Pritchard the inside center hauled down five meters short but it's there on the plate uh, for Tom Buckle a big replacement uh, loose head prop forward Kashmo is there again offloads to Lloyd Gregory in the shadow of the Brinkethin post here, and another score for Tlanharan here would certainly set them on their way. Pring on a hat trick, can he get there? Ball down two meters short. Jones spinning the passes out wide. Ross Pritchard, has he got there or has he been held up? So Tlanharan moving forward, didn't quite get there. Obviously, the referee saw that, that in terms of the ball hadn't crossed the try line. Otherwise, if it had been held up, then it would have the dropout from the try line. But uh, Tlen Haran still have that opportunity here with the scrum. And uh, again, good running, good angles. 
good offload you know the you know the St. Adam passing it to the first receiver who's moving it on after the uh, after he gets it so uh, again another another breather for for the players you know, another another knock and another injury but uh, I'm sure people will be okay and uh, again a great opportunity here for St. Harren a good effort there by Ross Pritchard he scored a 70 meter interception try against the Aberavon Green Stars which uh, taken them to this uh, final he's run the ball really hard I think his uh, aggressive running off uh, off Scott Jones at 10 has been uh, uh, exceptional here gets them across that gain line gets them moving forward and he's always looking for that offload once he's gone through the tackle area as well so uh, good at attacking sort of ploys by St Harren but uh, I will say that you know Brinketh's defense is, is strong here at this moment in time they'll uh, need a good scrum here to keep them out and uh, I'm sure they'll do that here yeah, Jack Pring is down receiving treatment uh on the far side interesting story about Jack Pring in, in the notes if you read it it's sort of a, a Love Island finalist I don't even know what Love Island is but apparently it's a, it's, it's a reality program uh, people tell me and I think my daughter tells me that but uh, um, a Love Island finalist so uh, uh, and it apparently an interesting fact for young Jack I'm almost dubious of such facts that uh, some people who prepare these notes and bearing in mind that it's Stan Haran and Gareth Nicholas is the coach so I wasn't going to quote it but that there you are if you tell me Geraint that he was a Love Island finalist I, what I can tell you is that uh, he's played rugby league for Wales and uh, he's also played rugby league for GB under 20s so that is a fact <laughs> I'm not accusing you of fake news here Geraint <laughs> I'm only just reading the notes I was given, so if it isn't fact, I'll apologise to all everybody who's watching here, but I'll also have a word with Gareth Nicholas afterwards. Um, you, you're probably right, because I think uh, on balance, uh, the, the notes that are being provided are pretty accurate. But it just goes to show that we're of an age, I think, Geraint. And that perhaps Love Island isn't uh, foremost in our minds when we search on the, uh, the telly box. Sanharan driving forward. But the scrum has collapsed in an almighty heap. So Mr. Brown was having a decent game, it has to be said. And uh, I'll reiterate what I said earlier on in the week. The refereeing has been uh, of a, a good standard. Uh, firm but fair, I think, is what uh, the conclusion is that I have come to. I think we forget about that sometimes. It's not just an opportunity for players to come here and experience the stadium. We'll talk about that after. Good scrum here from St. Harren. Solid scrum. Picked up at the base by Yayan Pring, but he's hauled down as uh, Sanharan looked to set it up again. And uh, Brinkethin scrambling on either side of the, the ruck here. And on the word of the uh, assistant referee on the far side, there's another penalty coming Sanharan's way. This could be an interesting call here by Sanharan. You know, three points will put him up a score ahead. Uh, but they've decided, they, you know, they're very, very confident in their scrum at the moment. You know, they seem to feel that they have the upper hand in the scrum and it's gone really, really well, not only now, but also in the first half. But uh, they also have to capitalise here. They have to score the points as well. Well, we look for Yayan Pring perhaps to uh, pick up at the base here and probe the narrow side. And uh, Jack Pring is poised on the wide outside. I'm sure Yayan would love a, another try to get a hat trick here. Not many people scored a hat trick at the Principality Stadium. I think sort of, uh, you know, if you think back again last week with the with a winger from uh, from Bill Swells who scored four tries uh, last week, and uh, he'd probably have that memory in uh, etched in his uh, brain for the rest of his life, which is fantastic. So it's picked up at the base, but San Haran have it all to do still because Brinkethin have held their shape. In defence, it's on its way from Leon Burton to the replacement uh, prop forward, and that's uh, Jack Dornsey. And still, Brinketh in hold out. And they win the penalty. Great work in defence there by the Cherry and Whites. And a very confident, good call there by the referee there. You know, saw the player coming in who uh, was supporting the ball carrier go off his feet. Didn't allow Brinketh in to compete, so good defensive ploys by uh, and work by Brinketh in there. And, uh, you know, 
Clannadon had the opportunity, three points, they went for the five points, they wanted to score the try, which again is, you know, we love to see people uh, going for the tries, we love seeing tries being scored, uh, but very, very good defensive set there by Brinkethin, so and they'll be pleased for that, and uh, to be able to get out of their 22 now will... Uh, It'll give them a lot of confidence. It's uh, still a one-score game, you know, five points in it, and uh, more. There will be more opportunities for both sides, I think, before the end of uh, end of the game. Yes, Leon Burton was down for Sanharan receiving treatment. He's there, scrum half. As you mentioned, uh, Kieran Price from uh, Bilth Wells and. Uh, Three tries are scored in that far corner, and I think it's going to be known forever uh, from Bill's uh, perspective, certainly as Kieran's corner. And I think they're still celebrating. I think um, <laughs> I had a phone call to this morning of Jeremy Pugh, so I have to go back to Jeremy Pugh. But I think they're still celebrating <laughs> today. But I think, it, you know, that game last Saturday, you know, you know, it seemed like only yesterday, but I think those games last weekend of under 18 rugby showed one, there is talent in Wales, two, they were exceptional games and they played the game in, uh, in a fantastic spirit with great skills and great attitude. And he certainly set the tone, didn't it, uh, that final? Uh, Built well as the, the youth team, they'd been on a, to a tournament in Portugal in the run-up to the final here. Good preparation for them. For San Haran, come again, now then. Can they get that score which might put them beyond reach of Brinkethin, but it's been knocked forward. And Brinkethin breathe, breathe, breathe again. Yeah, Brinkethin didn't quite get that kick to touch then, which allowed uh, Clanharan that opportunity to move the ball. And again, trying the offload, trying to actually look for that uh, that decisive pass and that offload to uh, to get them that score. But uh, uh, they're still in the uh, Brinkethin's 22. And uh, Brinkethin got to work now really hard here to get, uh, get uh, out of their own 22, back up the field. And because uh, when they did that at the beginning of the second half, they managed to score those points, and uh, I'm sure, as uh, I said earlier, I think uh, they will have opportunities to score. And Clanharan need, if they want to win this game, they'll need to get some points on the board here. But uh, Brinkethin are doing well, keeping them out. Yeah, Clanharan have been here camped in the Brinkethin 22 for a while. But the defence of the Cherry and Whites has been uh, rock solid. I think we've seen that again during the week, you know, great attitude, great intensity, people sort of putting their bodies on the line, you know, getting those tackles in there, tackling low. Um, and we, as we said earlier, I think the referees and the officials have been excellent as well. And I think uh, it's not only the opportunity for the for the players, coaches, families and uh, of the, the teams to uh, have this fantastic experience, but it's been a great opportunity to help develop and uh, give the referees a fantastic experience of being out here on the stadium. tackle made by the Sanharan captain Steve Jones Scott Jones rather advantage Sanharan here one or two more substitutions number 19 for Brinkethin is uh, Connor Law on for Mark Thomas. So we're into the final 10 minutes, just the one score. So the destination of the National Bowl yet to be decided, will it? Grace the glass cabinet in Bryn Kethin, or will it go back to Tlanharan? All picked up by Yeyan Pring. As uh, Sanharan get good ball from the scrum. This is good work. Might come here to uh, Tom Priest. Buckle to use his weight. That's Chris Osborne sending it wide. But Brinkethin have it well covered. And they counter. But again, they'll have to come back. Mr. Brown has seen an infringement. 
And it's another penalty for Tlanharan. Unlucky there by Brinkethi. You know, you know, Tlanharan took the gamble to, to kick the ball, but obviously the, I'm sure the player knew that there was a penalty there. But uh, um, the way they had dealt with that high kick and tapping it back, and uh, I thought for one second there we we're going to see somebody run the length of the field for uh, for a try, which uh, we saw earlier again in the week with, uh, with Stanwell School. So, That's uh, right. Um, yeah. But... Uh, um, I guess, as you said, another penalty for Slenharan here and uh, another opportunity for them. Yeah, Dan Howells was getting ready for a length of the field try. Does that try from Rhys Mottram, wasn't it? The outset half of Stanwell School from one end, from his, his in goal area. Terrific score. And I think that's been, uh, you know, when you look at social media and all the platforms, it's, uh, it's gone viral everywhere. And I think a uh, um, great moment for that, uh, for that young player. A standout performance from the young outside half. Pummeling away at the Brinkethian trial, and that's Chris Osborne, the replacement, fresh legs. The try surely must come now for Pring. Jack Pring gets his second. So two tries for Yayan Pring, two tries for Jack Pring. I think again, sort of a great movement off the, off the scrum, taking it up hard, the player ran hard, got across the game line there, quick ball. And a good angle there from Jack Pring at the end to come uh, to take the pass off uh, Ross Pritchard there to score uh, for Slenhard and uh, to give them that 10 point lead at this moment in time. But, uh, you know, they, they've been camped in that uh, 22 for a period of time now. They've come away with points. Now it's about Bring Kethin coming back, getting that confidence back in and getting that ball back into uh, the Slenhard and half and uh, um, creating opportunities there. So the kickoff is going to be really important here for Bring Kethin. What a day for the Pring family. All the tries are scored. By them, Yayan Pring with two, Jack Pring now with two, and Scott Jones to add the necessaries and take Clanharan into what is likely to be an unassailable lead, and he does so. And takes Clanharan uh, out to 29 points against Bring Kethin's 17. I think the key here now for Bring Kethin, good restart from uh, from the middle here and uh, put them under pressure and to uh, make mistakes here off Clan Harlan to get the uh, to maintain uh, the pressure on them in their uh, in their half here. So Clan Harlan need to keep their shape and uh, send the ball back in the direction of Bring Kethin and force them to run the ball back as they do. Well, they spent the last 10 to 15 minutes on the defensive of uh, Bryn Kethin. And the referee's assistant wants a word here. So a high tackle it's, is what is uh, adjudged. Well, it's not over until it's over. And a chance for Lloyd Bradley to send... Uh, Tlanharan back into their own 22, not quite managing it. No, but I'm sure now bring Kathy now, you know, even though they're only 12, you know, they're 12 points behind, they've got an opportunity here. They haven't been in Tlanharan's half for a while, but, you know, they've got to gain the confidence of what, when they did that at the beginning of the second half, they came away with points, and uh, I'm sure they'll be looking to do that, and I'm sure uh, uh, Lloyd Bradley will be orchestrating them here. Last time... Brinkethin shortened the line out. They managed to cross the uh, Tlanharan whitewash. They shorten it again as they pick up the legs. And that's uh, Jordan Lewis wearing 20 on his back. In go the forwards. They pile in. Send it first of all out to the narrow side through Sean Stacey, the replacement scrum half. The props offering themselves. That's uh, Sam Jervis wearing 17. Advantage to Bryn Kethin. Six metres short of the Tlenharan try line. So the mindset has changed from a, a defensive mindset to an attacking mindset as the Cherry and Whites look to close that gap once again. So close here. Bodies in the way. Surely there has to be a penalty for Tlenharan here. 
They'll feel aggrieved if uh, Mr. Brown's arm is not outstretched, but it's not at the moment. As the forwards pick it up again, making sure that the ball is secure, ploughing forward. It can only be a matter of inches. There is the whitewash. It's been crossed. Has the ball been grounded? No, it hasn't. So it's a dropout for Van Haren. Great pressure there by Brinkethin, you know, keeping the ball, attacking around the fringes there. Would they have wanted that try? Yes, they would have wanted that try there. But, uh, you know, Brink uh, Van Haren now, drop out from, uh, from the try line. Brinkethin will know they'll get this ball back and they can actually have another opportunity to, to attack them. So uh, um, I don't think this game is quite over yet. Well, the clock is against uh, Brinkethin. Surely he must be in the last five minutes. We've had a few stoppages for, for injuries. Two scores the difference, two converted tries. That's what uh, Brinkethin needs, and Scott Jones is in no desperate hurry to get the ball away. It bounces up in front of uh, Griff Davis. Steps off his right foot. Ball is slow coming back. Bradley sends it on its way. Owen offers himself. He's been a a willing horse all afternoon has the left wing. He's done some sterling work in that red and white shirt. Buckle coming in with a shoulder. That's not allowed. And the referee acknowledges the fact. So another chance for Bryn Kethin. The time is taken have up. To, yeah, it's hard enough to be careful here. You know, they desperately probably wanted the, the, uh, to stop Bryn Kethin, but... They've got to make sure that they feel confident in their defence, make sure they stay on side here, because the more penalties they uh, they give away, you know, the referee will be tempted. Does, does he go into his pocket to yellow card somebody? Uh, but bring Kath in here, will make sure now. They, they need to win this ball here. Nice, safe call. Win the ball and uh, put the pressure on the Sanharan defence and uh, keep the ball and use it wisely. Slowly but surely, bring Kath in, come to the line out. Over on the narrow side, it has to be diving over. And a great sort of, uh, again, another train, uh, training ground move, uh, training ground sort of uh, option from, uh, from Brinkethin. They, uh, they did it again in the first half, uh, at the beginning of the second half, to come down on the right-hand side. And a great sort of peel around the front there for, uh, from Brinkethin to score. So, uh, um, you know, seven points in it at the moment, big kick to come. So David Evans is the man credited with the swallow dial dive over on the far side. Now then, is there time to restart? Bryn Kethin, 22. Sanharan, 29. This effort to close the gap to a try. And it's there. So we're in for an interesting... Nail biting last few seconds. There will be time to restart. And Brinkethin have struck back again, having uh, soaked up the pressure down the far end, kept their focus, and are back within one score. Brinkethin 24, Sanharan 29. Great conversion there by uh, by Brinkethin player. And uh, as you said, you know what are they going to do? They've got the ball. Oh, they've knocked the ball on the kicker. That's not what probably what they wanted. There's another opportunity here. So the referee will call them for the scrum. And we know that uh, Sanharan's scrum has been rock solid. Referee looking at his watch. Well, it looked as one stage as if uh, Sanharan might uh, run away with it. But uh, dogged defence from Brinkethin and the odd breakout. And then focusing on that line out and uh, a little ploy to work. David Evans over has brought them back to within just the one score. And you rightly called it, Geraint. You felt that uh, the game wasn't over. It's still not over. Tackling for all they're worth now, Brinkethin. Desperately want to try and get that ball back now, uh, Brinkethin. You know, the key thing I was going to say to Fernando, they must try and keep possession, but opportunities here. It certainly is for Samoa in the kick and the chase into the wide open spaces, but it's out on the full and was the last throw that's the last throw of the dice and for Bryn Kethin because it'll be a Sanharan line out 
as you said, great defence there by Brinkethin. Managed to get the ball back off Flanharan, had an opportunity there, and slightly unfortunately, that kick just went straight into touch to uh, uh, to take the ball back into uh, Brinkethin's half. But uh, I'm sure they'll scramble again, they'll compete here in the line out. Um, you know, Flanharan taking their time there, the referee's asking them to come in and, and get a move on with the, with the game. But I'm sure Brinkethin will compete here. Yeah, yeah, and Pring was uh, receiving some treatment, and Brinkethin have stolen it through uh, Jordan Lewis. That's the try scorer, David Evans, which have given Brinkethin hope. Not sure that was the best tactic, but so late in the game, perhaps the ball should have been kept in hand. Sam Owen. Now then, what will he do this time? Into midfield, perhaps, where the support is there. Griff Davis can't get the ball away, doesn't want to throw a speculative pass, but it's going to be a full penalty. The game can't finish on a penalty. So it might depend on where Lloyd Bradley places this kick, and knowingly, uh, knowing that uh, they've been able to score from such a position, he's put every effort into this kick, Geraint. I think this is, you know, Games like this, we've seen it earlier in the week, you know, it's always come down to one score in it uh, in the club games as well. And I think, you know, you can hear the crowd now, you know, the, the two communities, Brinkethin supporters getting behind the Brinkethin team. You know, important line out here, you know, the question's going to be asked, will St. Harren go and try and compete or will they stay down and uh, uh, think about their defensive options? But uh, last last throw of the dice here, is it win? Last, last play? I should think so. Stenharan on the defensive, Brinkethin have been creative in the line-out, but they've coughed that one up. Stenharan in no desperate hurry to get the ball away, it's going to be their scrum if there is time. It looks as if there could be time for the scrum, nudged forward by uh, a Stenharan, uh, by a Brinkethin hand. The three has another look at his whistle. At his watch, rather. <laughs> Getting a little confused here. Just looking at the way they're positioned now. That, you know, I think the referee might have said, you know, there's still time to play, but uh, it'll be interesting if it's Fnatic can win this ball. Oh, strike against the head. Expertly done, David Evans again at hooker. Proving his worth and earning his corn. This is uh, Jordan Lewis. The ball, though, has been stripped away from him. So, Thanhara not going for touch, so there will be time. Linking up with Ross Pritchard. Brinkethin desperately need to get their hands on the ball here. Scott Jones sends it way downfield. Owen, dependable as ever. Tired legs everywhere. Held up by Jack Pring. There is the ball, says uh, Sam Jervis. I can see it, but it's gone the other way. Both teams here, both sets of players, throwing everything into this last few minutes. One sort of they're giving the ball back and forth to each other. They're not keeping possession for a period of time, but. Uh, um, commitment of uh, of these players has been outstanding and uh, it's great to actually uh, uh, to be here and be part of it and to watch it as well it'd be a shame if uh, either of these time teams uh, lose the game because they don't deserve to do so Leon Sylvester then is on for Brinkethin in place of David Evans So Brinkethin emptying the bench. And this one is for Griff Davis if he can prevent it from going into touch. And as he has done. To his opposite number, Ryan Russell. Full back on, full back. And Brinkethin. Uh, look how keen they are to get their hands on the ball. It's a penalty though for San Haran. So they've weathered that storm down in their own 22. 
Scott Jones just asking the question is the time how much time and still too close for comfort there's Gareth Nicholas in the blue uh, polo shirt on the far side with the uh, the grey cap uh, walking down towards the uh, Brinketh in 22 and he'll have been delighted with the uh, the performance of his players this afternoon so obviously going for the three points here there's still a bit of time left I'm not sure where the time is coming from but it's uh, you know I think uh, you know big big kick obviously will put him that uh, score ahead which will be uh, important for them but if it doesn't go over here I'm sure we'll see Brinketh in one counter-attack and bring the ball back in hand uh, straight at Clanharan. Well, the suggestion was some 15 minutes ago that there were less than 10 minutes remaining and there's no clock on the uh, on the scoreboard here. And Scott Jones then. From uh, a distance and the flags finally are in the air and that should be it. Oh, and it is the final whistle has blown that's the final act final dramatic act of uh, a hugely entertaining bowl final here the national bowl final is being clinched by Sanharan but it was nip and tuck towards the end there and had Brinkethin been able to retain possession then who knows but on the day on balance I suppose Sanharan just about deserved it I think if we looked at the statistics in terms of where the territory and possession was, it was probably in Clanharan's favour. And uh, what a way to finish. And I think sort of uh, for Scott Jones there of Clanharan, uh, the number 10 there, to kick a last-second penalty, not re not just to win, but just to make the confirmation of that win as well. So uh, a great positive end. And I think uh, you can see the delight like all teams have, uh, have done. As soon as that final whistle goes, the winning teams, the bench comes on, the coaches are on their field there. But... Uh, Big credit also to bring Keth in for their part in today's game as well. I think sort of they've been very, very competitive, you know, dogged in defence as well. Took their opportunities with some fantastic uh, training ground tries as well. And uh, uh, again, credit to both sides, both coaches, both uh, uh, both clubs as well for putting on a, a fantastic occasion for us all. Gareth Nicholas there on the left of uh, frame and the coach of Sanharan, but two well-drilled sides and. Uh, he certainly lived up to the billing of deserved uh, finalists here in the national bowl final. But in Kathleen, naturally, will be disappointed. They had their opportunities, they took the opportunities that they had, but the majority of those opportunities went San Haran's way, and they converted a few more than did uh, Brinkethin on the day. And they are deserved winners of the the bowl. Gareth Nicholas in amongst his players. Congratulating them. It's been a fine day for the club on their first uh, final at the Principality Stadium. Their chairman, well, I'm told by Gareth Nicholas that Hugh James, the chairman, is here by royal appointment because he met the Princess Royal in the uh, pre match entertainment uh, before the Wales Scotland match. And you can see them there, sort of, the, you know, you can see the, the smiles on their faces and the. Uh, going to acknowledge the supporters that have come down here from uh, from Clenharan in their buses today and I'm sure they've had a good day and I'm sure they'll have a, an excellent evening as well and uh, you know bring Keth in there in, in a circle there just uh, talking with each other so uh, um, again credit to them and uh, their team and uh, their community and their club as well but uh, um, as you can see on the screen there the, the smiles on their faces and uh, and the people in the crowd there, I'm sure they've had a, a great day from uh, from Tanadan and hopefully the people from Brinkethin had also had a, uh, an enjoyable day as well. Yeah, they'll be popping the corks uh, tonight at the uh, the Angel Inn where they had their pre-match meal on Thursday or perhaps it might be down the Pelican Inn at uh, Ogmore by Sea where Alex Newbold, the uh, left wing, is, uh, is the manager there. Not in the clubhouse itself, of course, but uh, let's congratulate uh, Tanharan and Brinkethin both teams have uh, acquitted themselves well and re represented their respective communities. Uh, and both communities can be proud of their efforts. And you can see on the faces of Brinketh, and obviously the disappointment of them all, and uh, and you have seen that all week. You know the losing side, and uh, you know they put a, their hearts and soul into the game today, and, and the disappointing factor. But hopefully, on reflection, you know maybe 
you know, later in the week when they wake up and, and uh, get the feeling that, wow, what a fantastic day. We played at the Principality Stadium. We've worked hard all season to get to the Principality Stadium and we were part of a wonderful occasion as well. So, uh, um, yes, it's difficult at this moment in time for them, but um, hopefully they'll reflect and uh, realise they've been part of a, a great occasion here. Yeah, it's a wonderful try scored by uh, both sides, but it's uh, a day for celebration for the Pring family. Jack Pring uh, opened the try scoring for uh, San Haran, and uh, Yayan Pring got in on the act, and they both uh, added another to make it a brace each as the uh, the medals are handed out and you will know who the uh, presentation party is uh, Geraint yes yeah, so Gwyn Bowden there who's uh, a community game board member who's uh, a district representative from the uh, uh, from the winning club of Llanharan of, uh, of District B of the Welsh Rugby Union so Gwyn a, a former referee and a, and a referee advisor who uh, um, is on the community game board is uh, giving the trophy uh, the medals out here to the uh, to the losing side Bryn Cethyn it's a memento of their day in the sun here at uh, the Principality Stadium. They came in as underdogs, but uh, they certainly punched above their weight. And uh, one or two uh, walking wounded. I think just before them, you know, the match officials went through to have their medals. I think it'd be wrong of us not to say well done to them and congratulate them on their performances as well as, uh, as match officials. And... Uh, They've done exceptional throughout, uh, not only today, but right throughout the whole uh, of all the games that we've had. You know, we'll have over 35 games uh, by the end of uh, by the end of Monday. We've had to find match officials. You know, not only the three that have been on the field, but also uh, match official four and five. And uh, credit to them and the referee society for uh, for their hard work uh, throughout the whole week as well. Yeah, I don't think I've seen the same uh, officiating lineup uh, in, in two games, uh, Geraint, uh, throughout the week. I never realised that we had so many unpopular people in Wales. <laughs> and I think it's sort of, you know, one of the key things is sort of for us is sort of we, we probably don't give them the reward and recognition that uh, uh, that they they deserve. And uh, our aim was this week is sort of uh, to get as many of them here as we possibly can, and to to get different people here and. Uh, uh, fair play to uh, Paul Adams and uh, Sean Brickle and John Mason and the team. They've managed to do that. And, uh, and we can see now Clint Harding getting their medal. So a uh, big congratulations to them. And you can see some of the mascots and uh, the young children with them as well. So well done to Clint Harding here. Yeah, it's a proud day for the club on their first uh, final at the Principality uh, Stadium. And they went out into a 10-point to nil lead and then they led by 19 points to seven but bring Kathleen Claw their way back into the match and uh, they never let Van Haren run away with it. Jayan Pring. Tom Buckle. I can see that it's been a, a hard fought encounter here right, where it looks on the uh, the faces of the forwards it's the forwards that decide who wins the game but it's the the pretty boys behind that determine uh, uh, the final score line is that a fair assessment you can see the bruises on their faces right now you know you can see that they've uh, put their bodies on the line uh, you know whether it be an attack and defense and uh, we know that sort of uh, you know the uh, jack bring and the end bring will you know may get credit in terms of this try scoring uh, uh, that they did but um, you have to give credit to all all the players that have been involved today and uh, also the squad players who may not have had that opportunity to play today may have played a part in the earlier rounds as well so uh, but you can see the smiles on their faces and uh, now we see gareth nicholas get in uh, um, a medal there who uh, um, great person great coach and uh, uh, pleased for him as well. Yeah, great author as well. I look forward to seeing the, the post-match report and I will try and identify the players. I mean, uh, <laughs> he, he mentioned one of the players who received a yellow card. It was Jordan Hughes and he called him a boiled egg because uh, five minutes and he's done. <laughs> that's what Gareth said. <laughs> and that's Gareth's humour. I think sort of uh, he, he gets the spirit of the game, understands yeah. what the game is all about as well. And uh, that's right. And um, no, pleased for him, but all pleased for the town. And, and also, it's nice to see I know San Haran celebrating there, but people may not be able to see. I think sort of you can see Brink Kethian applauding the San Haran players. And I think that's also shows what the game is all about as well. You know, that sort of the friendship, the sort of the values that we have in the game. And uh, well done to Brink Kethian, who stayed there, there and applauded San Haran on their victory as well. Yeah, it's a spirit of rugby, isn't it? And we congratulate San Haran. They are the national bowl winners 
in 2021-2022. And we get ready for the uh, climax of National Finals Day here with the National Plate Final, which will uh, kick off at 17.30, and that's between uh, Trioki and Penasta, and that will be uh, cleanly contested as well as uh, the game we have just seen between Brinkethin and Sanharan for the bowl. So, congratulations, Llangobarchiade, i Brinkethin, Haki, Sanharan and Benodol to Sanharan then the spoils. They are the National Bowl final winners in 2021-2022.
That is the plate that awaits either Trioki or Penasta. And we'll know in about an hour and a half's time where it will reside for the next 12 months or so as we approach the national plate final, the last game of the day here at the Principality Stadium. So let's have a look at the respective lineups. It's Chris John, Lewis Lloyd, and Dan Matthews up front for Triochi. Thomas John, Garin Daniel at lock forward. Kenneth Lloyd, Callum Phillips, and Callum Hanley complete the forward eight. Behind the scrum, it's Captain Jordan Lloyd at outside half, accompanying Nathan Griffiths. Logan Hutchins and Alex Green are the two wing three quarters. Declan Williams and Jack Harvey at centre with Liam Lloyd at fullback. On the bench today for Triochi, it's Robert Jones, Ellis Frackle. Uh, David Davis, Matthew Evans, Dewey Walden, Harvey Nash, Stefan Jones and Corey Dunn. And for Penasta, this is how they line up uh, for this uh, national plate final. Ben Griffiths, Greg Haynes, Lloyd Bridges, that's the front row. Rhys Panswick, Corey Tucker, Geraint Keppel, Joe Thomas and Rhys Stevens leads the team from number eight. Iron Bidgood and Joe Scrivens are the half-backs. Kieran O'Leary, Ryan Davis, the wings. Will Keep and Lewis Barnett are the centres, with Lawrence Pritchard completing the lineup at 15. The replacements, Lewis Rowden, Johnny Wright, Kieran Marnie, Lloyd Bodman, Ross Edwards, Lewis Stevens, Gareth Edwards and Elliot Keep. That's the Penaster squad, and as we await the squads to come out from... Uh, the dark of the tunnel to the uh, the fading light here at the Principality Stadium. And I'm joined alongside me here is uh, Chris Auer from the Welsh Rugby Union. Chris, there'll be a bit of bite, I think, a bit of edge to this match. Yeah, afternoon win, afternoon everyone. Yeah, it's the Pitmen against the Zebras. It's the Battle of District C and really looking forward to it. All homegrown players in the main with a quality coaching group. It's a set to be a cracker. It certainly is, yeah. The Pitmen of Penasta, and that uh, refers to their former... Mining village status, of course, those were the uh, good old days or the bad old days, as you uh, as you want to look at them. But the uh, the crowd is in, the supporters are in. They've been here all day, probably out in the uh, in the pubs of uh, Cardiff, enjoying the hospitality, the rare hospitality in uh, in Cardiff. And of course, we've had the women's uh, team, uh, the, the Welsh women's team, play on the uh, pitch next door, just coming up short in the end. But it's all eyes focused now on the national plate final, Trioki and Penasta. So the team captains with the respective muskets lead out onto the field, a purposeful walk from the zebras of Trioki on the left and the pitman of Penasta. In the blue on the right and listen to the cheers uh, from the crowd in the uh, middle tier of the east stand and let's have a word as well for the uh, referees uh, for this match the refereeing the officiating team led by kelvin short and uh, supporting him uh, matthew leon martin jones gareth jablonski and richard hughes and it'll be his task and it's an unenviable task to keep a watchful eye on the subs which has been a bit problematic, it has to be said, Chris, over the last uh, few days because of rolling subs, of course, and uh, the uh, confines of uh, even a 23-man squad. Yeah, I think the interchanges is certainly something that the squad's like, and uh, but very difficult for the commentator. Just a note on uh, Kelvin, the referee, I believe it's his last game today before he hangs up the boots, so we wish him well and thank him for his services. We certainly do, and... Uh, that's what has been encouraging, really, to see that. Uh, and I don't think we've had the, the same officiating team uh, appear twice over the last week or so. I'd never realised that there was such a, a strength in depth in the refereeing societies in Wales. Yeah, I think a big thanks goes to the officiate department. They rotate refs, they use this, uh, wrote the principality to develop refs. And again, we must remember how important it is, and uh, it's a big part in their calendar as well. So it'll be Trioki to kick off from left to right in this uh, opening 40 minutes. It's 40 minutes each way, of course, as uh, both sets of forwards get stuck in right from the outset. It's uh, Penasta with ball in hand, and it's uh, claimed there by the number seven, Joe Thomas, 
And out it goes quickly. We can see immediately there's a step up in standard here. And Pelasta driving forward, and as rightly mentioned by Chris, these guys have known each other since they were well in their younger age group. As uh, Pelasta stretched the Triorki defence, looking for the opening score. That was uh, Kieran O'Leary out on the left and finding Joe Thomas in uh, close support. His full first full senior term at uh, this level, Joe Thomas. Panatha have been here two, three, four times before, I think. Yeah, Panatha got a strong history here at the stadium. I think it's their fourth final in 11 years. Um, Triorki there first, I believe. It is, of course, the the heyday of uh, Triorki at the Oval back in the mid-90s, and I think uh, they were rewarded for their finishing position in the Premier League with a game against Fiji. And that was back in 1995 club with a really strong history lots of famous players have come out of the uh, out of the development bed of what is Triorki and likewise Penalta oh a nice pass out the back door And after injury, a player down on the 10-meter uh, line. I think they're looking perhaps to make a substitution. Great ambition by Penalta starting this game. They run the ball from most places so far and uh, rewarded with a penalty shot at goal. There's a replacement limbering up on the far touchline. It's uh, Lawrence Pritchard who's down injured and he steps off. So Pilaster having to regroup uh, well in the first opening few minutes. Yeah, one of those you can't plan for when uh, you lose the player so early on. So it's a blood injury, we uh, understand, for Pilaster. So Lawrence Pritchard is off, and that means that uh, Elliot Keep is on. Untidy ball at the line out, but it's there in the hands of uh, Joe Scrivens. And there are men over on the left here, but a good tackle, a solid tackle. It's still on though for Penasta, taken up by Reese Spanswick, the lock forward, the tall, lanky number four for Penasta. This is uh, Ben Griffiths, who's played his 50th game for the uh, club this season. And still the passes are going to hand. Geren Capable knocked back in the tackle. And uh, Scrivens again just. Uh, Put his foot on the ball for a split second here to consider what might be on. Looking for the breakthrough, that's well keep, and this is going to be the opening score for Penasta. Good pressure being applied by Penasta. And the opening score goes to their top try scorer for this season. That's his 22nd try now in 18 matches. He is an absolute points machine. He's one of those to watch today, and he's already got himself on the scoreboard. Very well controlled by Joe Scrivens. He's a box of tricks. He's an experienced player, been around the Premiership, good sevens player as well. See his influence there in those early stages. So first blood then for Penasta, for the pitmen. And Jordan Lloyd closing in on 200 games. Uh, my mistake, Joe Scrivens, rather, ex-Ospreys and Bridgend. Wales Sevens as well to line this one up some uh, 12 metres in from touch. Right footed aiming for the far upright, and he's got the measure. And Penasta go out to a seven point lead early on here. What a composed start by Penalta. They'd be very, very happy with that, how they constructed themselves to get to where they did, finish off with a score. So Triorki with a restart. Dropping the ball just beyond the 10-meter line. Gathered in by uh, Corey Tucker, the uh, Penalta number five.
Ben Griffiths back to Scrivens. Hoists the, the high kick. But underneath it was uh, Alex Green on the... Uh, or was it Logan Hutchins, perhaps? Logan Hutchins on the far side for Trioki. Well, this is an interesting character. Lloyd Bridges. He was out at half in 2012 and 2016. As I understand it, the centre in 2017. And five years on. He finds himself in the middle of that front row. First real opportunity now for Triorki to get some, some territory in this game. Get to their line out. Get themselves a good feel in this game, which they haven't had at the moment. And they haven't been able to settle into anything so far. Yeah, Triorki unbeaten in Division 1 East uh, Central. As indeed a mountain ash uh, in the league. And uh, they lead uh, uh, Triorki by courtesy of one try bonus point. Shiochi secured it at the back of the line out, and there's a Pinashta body on the ground beneath the uh, Shiochi feet rolling forward. In times gone by, he'd have tri tried his best to get out of there, Chris. <laughs> I would know when I was a back, so I stay out of that. <laughs> Urging Shiochi on, then that's uh, Iron Bidgood, the uh, scrum half. And Kelvin Short's arm is out. Shiochi striking back here. That's. Passes floated out, not going into the hands of uh, Liam Lloyd. So it's taken in by Alex Green, bid good. Trioki on the front foot through uh, Callum Hanley, the number eight. Uh, Kelvin Short calls him back for an infringement on the far side. At this stage in the game, You'd uh, think that they go for the post, and that's exactly what Jordan Lloyd is about to do. Now I can tell you that he is approaching 200 games for Trioki. Yeah, he's an absolute points machine. 12 years in that 10 shirt. Uh, second record higher point scorer. So, yeah, he's a reliable kicker. Right decision. Take the points on offer. Get yourself back into this game. Yeah, he's a master. A whole host of points, hasn't he? But forget about, what is it, about 1,200 points that he scored for the club. It's the... The next three that are the important ones. So going through the usual processes, in time order fashion. Jordan Lloyd. So to the left of the posts. Oh, hits the upright. It might. Uh, Fall back into the hands of Trioki, and uh, it has done, so they'll come again. Chris John, 33 years of age now. It's on its oh, well held by that man, Dan Matthews. He had to reach uh, for that one. Good work here. A decoy run initially, that's Declan Williams. Six, seven metres short, but Panasta somehow have uh, got their hands on it. And they'll try and get it back into the hands of Joe Scrivens, perhaps, so they might be more adventurous. Well, that's an outside half's pass. You were looking at daggers at me, Chris, uh, earlier on when I said that he played outside half in his earlier days. And well, that just confirms it for me. Well, if you want to move the ball and you've got a comfortable hand in play like that, it showed it there, didn't it? <laughs> I love the ambition. Love the ambition. So he could well be the secret weapon for Penasta. Lloyd Bridges. You just feel at the moment, Penalta that little bit quicker, quicker in their defence organisation, quicker in their setup in attack. That threat to go from anywhere is in their playbook. You can see that. True hockey coached by uh, Ian Evans and Andrew Bishop, and Penalta by uh, Jack Condy. And certainly this season under Jack Condy. Well, it's been a case of high fitness, uh, high skill and high reward for Pinasta. That's uh, Jack Condy's philosophy, a former representative himself, of course. 
Yeah, some pretty impressive coaching groups on both sides. I know Jack is uh, rated very, very highly, uh, works within the Dragons Academy setup, uh, Penalta boy, but uh, yeah, very highly rated young coach. Triolki defeated Brecken in the semi-final by 31 points to 29. It's a close run thing. Penalty goes uh, the way of Triolki. And in the quarters they defeated Aberystwyth away from home by 23 points to 15. Penalty on the other hand defeated Newcastle Emlyn at uh, Neath by 35 to 6. And in the quarters they defeated Newbridge by 29 points to 12. Yeah, that semi-final against Brecken was a was a back and forth game with the lead changing hands numerous times, and uh, yeah, that was a, that was a real entertaining semi-final. I'm looking forward to next season to see what Brecken can do, uh, as I hear that Dale McIntosh is uh, going to be coaching up there, and they'll they'll be put through their paces, that's for sure. Oh, he'll certainly bring influence, huge character, and uh, one experienced guy and a quality coach. Uh, Brecken certainly have ambitions. As indeed do Triorki here. Pass not going to hand, snapped up though. And uh, sent downtown scrambling back there is uh, Declan Williams. Needs some help here as uh, Will Keep is up on him very quickly. Triorki steady the ship and look to bring it away through uh, Callum Phillips and the ex youth captain. He's wears seven today for the Zebras. Jordan Lloyd waits, takes it a second attempt. Back on the field is uh, Lawrence Pritchard running repairs. Sorry, Scrivens again. So here we go with uh, Penasta looking for their second score here. Out on the right through Ryan Davis. Bridges looks to take the short route. Scrivens opens the door, great work, lovely timed pass, an interpassing between Garen Daniel and Callum Hanley, and it's a second try for Penalta. The speed that Penalta are playing at and the quick recycle of their rucks is not allowing True Orkey any time to settle in the defence. Even a team with uh, Andrew Bishop's mark on it, a strong defensive player himself, they just can't settle, and they're really running riot at the moment. They certainly are. They know exactly what to do uh, when they get the ball in hand. They all started on the counter, didn't it, when Triorki were attacking? It's, well, it's reminiscent of how the All Blacks play, isn't it? You know, the, the defensive set is good, but then on the counter, everybody switches on to attack. Yeah, they're just super organised in defence. You, There's a turnover here near the touchline that resulted in that kick downfield. The pressure then applied, resulting then in a the few phases, and the try was scored. They, they're impressive. So Scrivens to add the conversion and does so simple effort from in front of the posts and uh, Penasta extend the lead over Triorki to 14 points without response so Lloyd kicks long and finds Corey Tucker in the hand in that second penalty try. Scrivens sends it downfield, taken by his opposite number, Jordan Lloyd, who leaves it for Liam Lloyd. Again, you can see how they're relieving pressure, they're exiting their half, isolating the winger to the touchline with a strong kick chase, the penalty one. Again, it's just that organisation and that energy that they bring in at the moment is something Truoki just can't live with right now. Yeah, that was Will Keep. The uh, centre scored the first try for Pilaster. Now Scrivens. Fancies a kick at goal here. Confident player when certainly is and uh, we've seen uh, his skills so far his kicking from hand from the tee and uh, directional kicking and uh, 
game management to the fore early on. He's living off a good platform, though. Everyone in front of him is giving him clean possession. It's an outside half dream at the moment. So from outside the Triorki 10 meter line, will it carry? He just drops uh, wide of the right hand upright. So Triorki will uh, restart from the 22. Just feel Triorki need to just settle themselves and get some phases or get some territory that can hold on now and just get get a foothold back into this game and just maybe even slow it down slightly and take the uh, take the energy out of Penalta a little bit. The Scrivens aiming for the far touchline. Reese Stevens will claim that uh, try for uh, Penasta. Reading my scribbles here. You just see, though, with both sides, uh, how many homegrown players are, are littered throughout. It's a real testament to the quality of the uh, the junior sections and the youth sections of both clubs. How many of these boys are representing their clubs of origin here today? So the scrum takes place between halfway and the uh, 10 meter line of Penasta. The time pass not quite going to hand uh, this time from Wilkeep. We've seen how strong he is in the uh, on the attack. So first offence, the first infringement. Trioki will get the put in. Clean ball. Forwards combining well. It's there for Nathan Griffiths. Now, then, was that? Knocked forward deliberately. Plaster alert to every opportunity. Yeah, discipline around that breakdown about when to compete, when not to compete, fill the field. But that was much better by Triorki then. Kept some phases, got their hands on the ball. You know, that could have been one of their players busting through there before the intercept may have even come that way too. But it, a one hand maybe, controversial, maybe a yellow perhaps win. Yeah, we've seen... Uh, the referees reluctantly going to their pockets, I have to say, but one or two yellow cards have been dispatched this week for a deliberate uh, knock forward. So Trioki making sure that everyone is on the same page here as uh, Lewis Lloyd gets uh, set to throw into the lineout. To the back, off the top of the lineout. And the forwards drive in around the uh, the ball winner. A half chance perhaps for Lewis Lloyd, so close to that uh, Penasta try line. Trioki could well do with a score because Penasta threaten every time with ball in hand. And Chris John is there. Uh, See the bang to the head, but play goes on behind him. And Penasta may well have turned it over. They have done so. Into the hands of Bidgood, back to Scrivens. Only as far as Alex Green on the Triorki right. 
getting his hands on the ball there is Joe Thomas, but it's done illegally. Just went beyond the ball slightly. Yeah, I think he said that he kind of he had his hands to the floor and he was kind of he wasn't managing his body weight before he did get his hands back on. So, yeah, but that was better for Triorki. They're in momentum then. They were starting to creep towards the line, but just a little bit soft at the ruck protection and Penalta came in and stole it, turned it over. This is better though, they'd be much more pleased with, uh, with the way they've managed the last seven, eight minutes of the game. Chalky foregoing the uh, three point on offer. And knowing that they, uh, they need a little more at this stage of the game. So a little word from Chris John to his hooker. Taking down the front this time. Prepare for the catch and the drive and a pre set move. Didn't quite come off. Sometimes they do, they do in the training paddock, as you know full well, Chris, but not necessarily every time in a game situation. Yeah, you can see what they're trying to do, the peel around the front. Um, I think the Penalto hooker just came in and just blocked that one off and slightly got in the way. So, yeah, but, you know, again, that's one of those they could have scored from. So they're in the right area of the field. They're knocking on the door now, Triorki. Hopefully now they can keep their field position here or at least uh, stop Penalto from exiting too far. It's a bit good feeds. Snapped up by the captain, Reese Stevens. Penalty on its way here for Triorki. Advantage. Triorki, they look to uh, bring their forwards in onto it. Perhaps a little poke through there from the outside half, but well covered though by the Penasta 14, Ryan Davis. Not sure there if it was an, a knock-on advantage or was he signaling a penalty? Knock-on advantage by the looks of it. Kelvin Short, so he's called them all the way back. And Trioki will find a little more uh, room perhaps on the narrow side this time where Alex Green operates on the right. Although he's g going over and uh, shadowing his outside half, Jordan Lloyd, and standing directly behind him. And to keep Penasta guessing. Griffiths waits. Into the hands of the uh, centre. That's uh, Declan Williams. The long pass bringing in the fullback uh, Liam Lloyd. His path is blocked on the angle. That's a great run from Callum Hanley. Almost to the try line. This time, perhaps, into the hands of the hooker. Great tackle. And an even bigger prop forward in the shape of Dan Matthews. Even can't get uh, over the whitewash, but it's there this time. And it's Nathan Griffiths, the scrum half. The last man up, but hold on a second. Kelvin Short has seen something. So, the upshot of that is a scrum, a scrum for Trioki. Looked okay from here, Chris. Yeah, I'm, like you, quite puzzled on that one. I'm not quite sure. Well, options left and right here now then for Trioki. Round comes Nathan Griffiths and uh, giving Pilafta guessing three players on the right, three attacking players on the right of the scrum for Trioki, three on the left. Yeah, real difficult place now for Penalta to do, uh, defend from. Which side do you overload? Where's the threat coming from? You've got to protect, obviously, the eight's pickup as well. So there's a lot to cover off here from this scrum in the middle. It's 
So another opportunity then here for Triorki. Callum Hanley controls at the back. Triorki so close this time perhaps. Hanley, and he's hauled down by Lawrence Pritchard. Griffiths, second bite of the cherry. He stopped in his tracks by uh, Corey Tucker. And Kenneth Lloyd is going nowhere. The Triorki number six. The forwards will pick and go once again as they're so close to that Pinasta try line. Dan Matthews goes in, but still Pinasta hold out. Call for on the narrow side. Hanley this time reaches out and uh, Kelvin Short's arm is in the air and Triorki have their opening score. Yeah, they deserved that, didn't they? They kept the ball, they were adding pressure. I thought they may have lost their numbers when they came down the short side, but he did really, really well then to reach out and score. <laughs> I'm the only one that's losing the numbers here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but I can uh, confirm that it was Callum Hanley who scored this time. Yeah, the man responsible for the match winning charge down in the semi-final against Brecken. All action. So that's brought a reaction as well from the uh, supporters of Triorki in the uh, middle tier of the uh, East Stand. So Jordan Lloyd, five metres in from touch. Left footed kicker. It's a great effort, but not quite on the mark. But Triorki are off the mark. They've got their opening score. And it's Panasta 14, Triorki 5. So territorial advantage, net gain for Pinasta here. So a short line out here. So we're going to see a carry, I think, of this. And then maybe try and split the defence. Now Triorki would have none of it. You've know, seen a few ploys from the shortened lineup this week, and um, for the greater part, they've come off. A rare mistake uh, from Corey Tucker. Panasta lock forward. Yeah, they'd be disappointed with that because they almost achieved what they were looking for. They had the uh, overload of numbers to come back on that short side. Unfortunately, uh, just had his hands on back to front in that example. <laughs> and getting the bird as well from the uh, opposition camp. Yeah, right underneath the Triorki, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the main fan base up there in the stands. So after that rather hectic start, the game has settled down. Hanley looks to get his foot on it and heal it back for Nathan Griffiths. Lloyd, the long pass into midfield and into the hands of Alex Green at last. Let's see what he can do. Sets it up just inside the Pinasta half of the field. Callum Phillips. Kick from Declan Williams is half charged down. Bit good. Can't get away. In goes Joe Thomas. It's back on the Triorki side. Good hands. The hooker, the lively uh, hooker, that's uh, Lewis Lloyd. 
Been impressed with him so far, Wayne. Only 18 years of age, I think. Yeah, he's been throwing everything into the uh, the attack. He finds himself now out on the uh, the far wing as the ball is uh, moved out to the right here. Good tackling. Good solid tackle from uh, Will Keep. First try scorer for Penasta. Uh, that tipped forward. I'm happy that the ball went backwards, says Kelvin Short. So Triorki come again. Nice back back inside to the fullback Liam Lloyd. For Penasta. I've turned it over. Number 12 for Panatha will keep. He's a key part of their defence and their attack. He's been a big player so far with and without the ball. Big physical presence. So Joe Scriven's taking advantage of this, uh, this time off to other gathering of the troops. Again, though, Triorki should feel quite pleased with where they are at the moment. They've clawed their way back in, they've got their try. They're getting some field position. They're starting to get some phase play moving. Um, they've just got to be mindful not to lose numbers when they get into the width, uh, into the wider channels, because Penalto is certainly looking to uh, compete and are well organised in that area of the field. Yeah, I saw a little clip on, uh, was it YouTube or was it on Facebook? Uh, Sean Edwards, the former Wales defence coach, uh, sending a message to Penalto. And in typical form uh, from Sean Edwards, don't leave anything out there. Who would want to argue with that man? <laughs> it's a good touch finder. And takes play up to halfway. So half hour gone in this opening 40 minutes. And Pilaster, two tries, two conversions to the good. But Triorki slowly but surely finding their feet. 14 points to five. Pritchard. It's well covered though by Logan Hutchins. Very famous surname there in uh, rugby royalty of Triorki. Declan Williams almost managed the uh, the 50-22. Referee's assistant has uh, spotted an infringement on the far side, so he'll call them all the way back. Kelvin Short having a quick word with the two sets of uh, front rowers there just to say to them to uh, hold it up, keep it up. Fantastic crowd here from uh, from both clubs. You can see, I believe there's 10 buses that came down from uh, Penalta today and no doubt the trains were uh, were very busy. Yeah, always good uh, travelling support uh, from uh, Penasta. Remember the youth side uh, travelled down to West, West Wales a few years ago, I think, when Penasta won the uh, the trophy, in fact, and they brought a good uh, travelling uh, 
contingent with him and it was Jack Condy I think that led them to the uh, the final that year maybe five six years ago if not more Griffiths waits sends it on its way and it's uh, Declan Williams more often than not standing in the fly half position that allows uh, Jordan Lloyd to be a little bit more creative outside perhaps yeah, definitely Declan Williams, you know, is the target man to give them gain line and, and get themselves over the line. But just getting isolated then on the next carry. The danger there of single carries with no support, can't support the breakdown. Quite easy pickings then for the penalty defence. So after a solid uh, defensive period from Pinasta, they find themselves in the opposition 22 and they've shown themselves to be uh, quite dangerous when they get into the opposition 22 and the chance for Johnny Wright they've got some tall trees in that line out they can hit plenty of options there mm -hmm. shortened line out again and it's uh, down from Corey Tucker and there he is again Chiyoki tried to get their hands on the ball Tipped forward, it's an advantage Penasta surely. And he just knocked down. Well, you ask the question. I suppose it's balanced itself out now. <laughs> well, he took the risk and got away with it. That's one all. So a scrum virtually in uh, midfield here for Penasta. And Joe Scrivens is over on this side of the uh, scrum. And the fullback, Lawrence Pritchard, is also in the lineup on the wide outside, on the narrow side of the probe. Nice run there from uh, Lewis Barnett, the outside centre. Now then, Panasta have the width of the field. And Reese Stevens has already got one try to his name. Waiting, poised. That's uh, Reese Spanswick. The lock forward in there as well as uh, Lloyd Bridges at a tight head. Nice neat uh, step from Geraint Keppel. Bit good. Oh, nice. Uh, nicely done into the hands of uh, Johnny Wright. We've got a Truoki player down here. Looks in uh, quite a bit of pain. I think it is the hooker, isn't it, by the looks of it? He's got a, a headband, the 18-year-old. Lewis Lloyd may have turned on his ankle. Yeah, he, he was involved in, uh, in the contest that last breakdown and then just seemed to uh, roll out in a bit of discomfort. I hope he's OK. Yeah, the medics are on the field immediately. And at uh, the expense of repeating myself, of course, the, very often when the medics come on in numbers, uh, you fear the worst and hope for the best, and uh, very often it is a case that the injury is not as bad as it looks. Yeah, we certainly hope so. And, you know, par for the course, it's good medical uh, professionals here supporting this event um, alongside the, the team medical staff. We've got the South Wales medical guys here as well who've been here throughout to... Uh, um, top level professionals and here for the international games as well so we've got the best of the best here and I hope he's all right yeah, so nine points the difference as we approach uh, half time and this one looks again as if it's going to go down to the wire but it might be that uh, stamina will tell ultimately but the the crowd has been entertained certainly uh, in this opening 35 minutes or so and they've come in in their droves haven't they I think this is the best crowd we've had all week yeah, it's a huge turnout from both clubs. Again, what we've seen throughout in these uh, these finals is how important uh, the finals and reaching these finals has meant for these villages and towns throughout Wales. We've seen huge attendances, and uh, yeah, you know, anyone who says that Welsh rugby is uh, is dying a death, I think they need to come and have a look at this. Well, that's good news. The young hooker, Lewis Lloyd, is back on his uh, back on his feet. Yeah. I'm happy to carry on, he says, and uh, well done to the medics. They've uh, worked the magic once again.
Yeah, it's great to see him back on his feet. Looks like he can take full part, and yep, he seems ready to go, which is great news. If he can hold out until half time, he'll have a a bit of a break to recover. But his first task is to go down into this uh, scrum where Panafta will look to uh, steal a march on the zebras. So I wonder which way they'll go this time. They went through 12, who will keep. Are they going to go through Scrivens? Yes. Through Scrivens and through the outside centre. That's uh, Lewis Barrett. Hold down five, six metres short. There's no one on the narrow side as uh, Bidgood had a quick look and evading the first tackle and the second. That's the Penasta second row, Rhys Banswick, who gets a third for Penasta. And what a time to score just before half time. Very pleased with that. I've been impressed with the uh, the pairing of these two second rows. They connect up well. That little tip there out of the uh, tackle to his second row partner goes under the under the sticks. Crucial score for them before half time. Yeah, Palasta keep kept the uh, Trioki uh, side guessing there because Lawrence Pritchard had worked his way over to the uh, narrow side where he was on the open side there previously for a. Uh, what appeared to be a, a promising attack. It's a Scrivens. He's on the mark again, and Pilaster are out over 20 points. It's uh, 21 points to five, the lead, as we... Uh, Approach half time here at the Principality Stadium. Penalta have been pretty lethal when they've got themselves into that uh, into those scoring zones. They've come away most times with a score. Good chasing by Trioki. Carith Lloyd that uh, took that one. These games being uh, streamed live, of course, on YouTube and uh, by courtesy of uh, WIU TV. And uh, some uh, six and a half thousand people have uh, tuned in. And that uh, means that over the week, probably, well, it's in the hundreds of thousands, which is good news for the. Welsh Rugby Union for their first experiment on the road to the Principality. Scrivens sends it way downfield and it'll bounce into touch. Some five metres short of the Trioki at 22 and that's the last act of the first half which has seen Penafta cross for three tries against uh, Trioki's uh, one. They've tried their level best to uh, have the Zebras but they've got much more work to do in the second half. So at half time, it's Trioki 5, Penafta 21 in the National Plate Final.
So the teams come back out for the second half of the final match of the day here at the Principality Stadium in, in the national plate final between Trioki and Pinasta. And Trioki have it all to do in this second period. They trail Pinasta by 21 points to five. Three converted tries in that opening uh, half for the Old Blues. The pitsmen of Pinasta. And how are Trioki going to respond, Chris Howard? Well, I think the template for Trioki is to try and get some de decent field position, try and get some set piece in the right areas of the field. I'm not sure the strength is to try and run the ball from, from depth. That, that's more probably Penalta's strength. So I would suggest a little bit of the template that they showed in the first half in that uh, second period. So it'd be Joe Scrivens to restart for Penasta. Kicks long. It's uh, well covered by Nathan Griffiths, the scrum half for Trioki. Willing servant there, Callum Hanley takes it up uh, to his own 22. And Pinasta again digging deep, may well have turned it over, and they have done so. Bid good, just a pop up pass for Reese Spanswick. Very impressive in the opening half, as indeed was the captain led by example. Reese Stevens got the second try for Pinasta. That's Corey Tucker. So Jordan Lloyd finds touch just inside the uh, Pinata half. Ross Edwards, uh, my mistake, it's uh, Dewey Walden is on for Trioki wearing 20. Yeah, made an immediate impact there. I think he chopped his man low and got in on the uh, the contest as well. He stopped Palanta moving. Great first uh, involvement by him. Good angle. But look how eager Pinasta are in the uh, the contact area and preventing that uh, ball from coming out quickly, slowing ball down. Yeah, they're certainly piling bodies into that breakdown. Mind you, if uh, Trioki had got that ball back, they were a little bit low on numbers then coming back on that next phase. So, again, maybe something to, uh, to keep an eye on for Trioki about how they could exploit the energy of this uh, Pinalta defence. Ethan Griffiths waits. Calvin Short indicates that the scrum would wheel through the 90 degrees, so he'll call them back. This is better from Griffiths on the loop. Taken above his head somewhere by uh, Thomas John. Not 
quite being able to hold on to possession, so uh, Panasta will have the scrum. Yeah, that will frustrate coaches uh, Andrew Bishop and Ian Grade Slade there because they'd done a lot of good then when they'd managed to get on the outside of uh, Penalta and then that slight spillage into the contact area. That's so frustrating. Scrivens. Williams with a high kick. Ball not quite going to hand. Dig out by Callum Phillips. Scrivens looking to open the door for the Panatta centre, Lewis Barnett. Nice step from Roy and Davis. Hutchins leaves it for Jacob Lloyd. Johnny Wright will have a go, takes the ball into contact and oh, breaks oh. through the tackle. Great work by the uh, converted outside half. Cody Tucker has seen a lot of the ball in his hands this afternoon. And this guy needs no second invitation to take the ball up further, Reese Banswick. That was impressive there by Johnny Wright, wasn't it? Fielding the kick on the, uh, on the width and then showing some footwork. Pritchard! And out it goes onto the left here, and a try comes for Geraint Capel. I think a lot of the credit there will go to uh, to Johnny Wright, was it, from that uh, kick reception and how he carried back. But hold on a second. Lost forward, says the uh, referee's assistant. So... A let off for Triorki. He must have literally lost it forward just as he was putting it down on the ground in. Oh, he'll be annoyed with himself. Maybe you think twice about diving next time. <laughs> but in all seriousness, again, that threat in attack with uh, Penalta when they have the ball in hand, they look pretty organised, pretty accurate. Scrivens is playing so flat to the line today, bringing lots of runners onto the ball. Chiorki scrum turned towards the uh, touch lines, but they managed to uh, scramble it away back safely into the hands there then of Jordan Lloyd, who finds good touch under pressure from his in-goal area, and that's lifted the pressure. Yeah, that's textbook then. Excellent. Excellent set piece. Good delivery from 9 to 10. They've cleared their, uh, they've cleared their lines well there. Here come the reinforcements. Well, the Trioki hooker, Lewis Lloyd, was injured towards the end of the first half. He's being replaced, as is his colleague in the front row, Dan Matthews. So number 21 on for Trioki, that's uh, Harvey Nash.
So Robert Jones is on for Triochi at hooker. And this guy's quite a handful, isn't he? Johnny Wright. I was talking earlier to uh, Peter Owens, who many people know is a, a font of all rugby knowledge in uh, in Wales, who, who watches a fair bit of uh, Penalty, and he was really raving about Johnny Wright. He said he's a uh, he's a complete ball player in a forward body. He's uh, he's got lots of skills, and as you've seen there, he's pulling some tricks out of a hat today. And he's blowing a bit now. That uh, little drink will uh, sort that out for him. 21, that is the uh, replacement for Triochi, and that's uh, Harvey Nash. So Penarte on the front foot, Scrivens looked a little forward from here, but play on, says uh, the referee. Hall down on the 22, that's uh, Rhys Panswick. Williams. And Wright finding himself uh, out on the wing, back up on his feet immediately to secure possession for Penarte. Picking up the legs, that's Ben Griffiths, the loose head prop. Round the back it goes from Scriven, so that was the original intention, but spotted that uh, the Triochi backline was up very quickly, a change of direction, and Ben Griffiths immediately back in the thick of it. Yeah, good defensive set here by Triochi, organised, oh, unfortunate there. Yeah, they'd done everything right there. They hadn't overcommitted to Rax. They'd shut off the outside, which is Scrivens looking for that outlet all the time. They were starting to get some positive collisions and unfortunately just giving away a penalty there. I think it's about game management now, isn't it? And as much that uh, one or two injuries on both sides and Penafta in particular, they know that Scrivens has been down. So let's uh, take the heat out of it. Let's take a breather and let's ask uh, Joe Scrivens to have a go at the posts. Yeah, sensible tactic with the scoreline the way it is, a 21-5. Keep the scoreboard ticking over. Take your chances when they come. I think a lot of time, uh, teams this week have really found it surprising, the, the, the width and the size of the field. It's certainly draining. And it's had to put up with, uh, what, about 25, 26 games probably so far. Scrivens, that's another two points. Triochi still on five, but Penasta slowly but surely move further ahead. They're on 24. Stevens the captain. Penasta. It's a nice little uh, kick over the top from Scrivens. Meant for Declan Williams. Uh, will keep rather. 19 for Penasta. That's uh, Lloyd Bodman. Picked up. Off the ground there by the replacement, Robert Jones for Triochi. Spanswick, not a bad effort from a lock forward. Says Jacob Lloyd, the replacement, although he's taken on the number 13 shirt and he's found a gap in midfield, the kick and the chase. All he ran straight in the back of Joe Scrivens, I would say. Referee doesn't agree with me. 
and has awarded the penalty. Referee's always right win. Of course. He's got the last word. Fantastic be the sportsmanship there. You had the outside half there for uh, for Triorki. Jordan Lloyd helping number five for uh, Penalta Corey Tucker who went down with cramp. He's covered some ground today, he has. He's impressed me. His work rate is phenomenal. And this testimony to the fitness of the Penasta players and uh, Jack Condé's philosophy. High fitness, high skill, high reward, and at the moment they're getting the reward. They're 19 points ahead. So, Rhys Stevens there, the captain, the Penasta captain, just having a word with referee Kelvin Short and uh, perhaps pointing out that uh, Trioki milked that one, but the referee says, well, I've got the last word. That's not the way I saw it. And the upshot of all that is that Trioki know exactly what needs to be done to get back into this game. The three points in this stage is no, no real of no real benefit. No, absolutely. They need to put seven points on the board here to get themselves uh, to get themselves within some an opportunity to kind of get some scores back and try and see if they can get themselves into this game. And ah, here's an opportunity. They get Looks a good like nudge on, and yeah. the support is there. And they have their try. And it's the number seven who gets it. And a vital try, a vital score it is. Good interplay with Nathan Griffiths, a scrum half. And Callum Phillips would be the try scorer. So exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah, the Truoki scrums look solid all day. Their set piece is stable. Um, and again, a very difficult area of the field to defend for for Penalta, with a good inside support off the line there by the seven, a deserved try. Just what the game needed, I think, when to get a score back. Certainly, and they could have done with another two points from the boot of Jordan Lloyd, but uh, the score stays at 24 points to 10. Bid good. And finds the his path blocked and the flight of his pass as well. And who's there once again to pick it up? But Reese uh, Spanswick, the number four. That's better from Bid good over the head of uh, Spanswick that time. Pritchard up from fullback. Scrivens is in there. That's Corey Tucker. Keep. In goes Ryan Davis, the right winger, to uh, try and release it, but it's back on the uh, Trioki side of that pass gone to hand. Then there was clear daylight in front of the Trioki right winger. It's a shame that didn't go to hand. He had some open space in front of him. Again, these, in, these intricate little patterns between uh, the two second rows. They can carry when needed, they can play out of hand. They've got a telepathic understanding. It's like they've got a remote control understanding between the pair of them.
you do feel and obviously Triorki sense it with uh, with Declan Williams there that with Scrivens playing so flat that intercept pass is on Panasta come again, creating in midfield. Pritchard up from fullback. Into the hands there of Ryan Davis. The ball bounces off Corey Tucker, but the penalty is there for Panasta. Triorki having to work so hard in defence. Their, their, their ethic and their work rate is uh, phenomenal. Penalta are throwing everything. You just feel a bit more clinical, a bit more accurate. Um, you can see Gareth Bisp, the coach, uh, is uh, imprint. A very talented scrum half himself in his day. 14 points, the difference. As Joe Scrivens. Eyes the posts. And to extend Penafta's lead. Twenty-five out of twenty-eight of this Penafta squad have come through the junior ranks and uh, the youth, and from. Uh, Caffili County perspective, uh, well, Penasta just one of seven clubs that have reached the finals this week. And a remarkable eighth visit by Penasta to the Principality Stadium in 21 years. Scrivens hits the near upright. So the score remains at 24 points to 10. And Triorki will strive to get down the far end of the field and see whether they can, can conjure up another score. A converted try would make the last uh, sort of 15, 10 minutes interesting. Give it to Johnny. A whip of a pass from... Uh, Bit good, that name should ring a bell. Son of uh, former Wales international Newport uh, centre Roger Bidgood. Lloyd Jordan, that is to uh, Jacob, and slid into the slipped into the tackle. But yeah. Kelvin Short's arm is out, I think, Chris. Yeah, um, a high shot there, definitely. Well, then where's Declan Williams going? Setting it up for the uh, Triorki replacement, wearing 19.
good tackle from Lewis Barnett nailed his man and Pinasta are in looking for the turnover they've got it wow what a pass that was from Johnny Wright another long pass and that's opened the door again Corey Tucker with a final pass there the kick and the chase a little too long perhaps but Pinasta looking to send it wide immediately there Yeah, again, you just feel for Triorki. They just can't get a foothold in this game at the moment. You know, Triorki competitive when they select to go into the breakdown. They've turned it over, and straight away, Triorki are coming back then to their own 10 meter line. So Ben Griffiths, the skillful pin after prop, uh, explaining to referee Kelvin Short that his arm has been taken away from him at uh, scrum time. It's not a fair contest as a consequence. dug out by the captain Reece Stevens great defender he's not bad in attack either he's already got one score to uh, his name this afternoon yeah a real stalwart for Penalta over 150 games played this season So Scrivens just uh, pulling his laces tight this time. Perhaps he thought last time, well, I could have done better had I uh, taken the opportunity at that time to tie a double knot, perhaps, in my laces. My mum used to tie my double knots in my uh, laces <laughs> when... <laughs> so in the interim, well, we've got a... A casualty in Declan Williams, who's performed well for Triorki this afternoon. And out of shot, we've also had uh, Johnny Wright sprinting towards the touchline to be uh, replaced by uh, Greg Hines at hooker. Yeah, shame to see Declan Williams go off now looking injured. He's been uh, he's thrown everything into this today. He's carried hard. He's worked hard in defence tirelessly. Uh, he could be quite proud of his uh, his uh, cup final appearance here today. Well played. Yeah, he's been replaced by uh, Stefan Jones for the remainder of this match. So Scriven centre field. Push Penafta further ahead. He's got a good strike on that one, good contact, and all because he tightened his bootlaces and takes Penafta out to a 17 point advantage. Well, that's a, a learning for every young man that he should tie his bootlaces tight if he is to take uh, the shots at goal. So it's Penafta 27, Triorki 10, and we can safely say that Penafta have certainly got one hand, if not two, on the plate. So Triorki chasing the game, 17 points adrift, that's uh, three scores. But with fresh legs on the field, they'll keep uh, plugging away. Scrivens looks for the wide open spaces and the gap, perhaps between the fullback uh, Liam Lloyd once again it's the energy in the kick chase from the Penalta they just they're so quick across the ground spread in the field they're just super organized they know where they are what they're doing and 
Logan Hutchings. Immediately beneath us here in the uh, in the stand. Lloyd sends that one deep into the 22, but the captain, Stevens is back there, Pritchard under pressure, right-footed, might find touch, that's an excellent kick. Superb corner flagging again by Reese Stevens, preempting the kick, throwing a quality pass then. Pressure relieved. Jacob Lloyd, excellent pass, couldn't quite find, uh, well, Nathan Griffiths is on the wing at the moment. Harvey Nash is his replacement at scrum half. Trioki have uh, changed their shirt numbers, which is a little confusing. Scrivens. And the chase is good. Now, was that ball knocked forward or was it knocked backwards? And here's a decision for the referee's assistant, but it might be taken out of his hands because there is a, an offence closer to halfway and Pinasta will be denied, not for the first time, by the outstretched arm of uh, the referee. I think he's in front of the kick then, um, hence why he's pulled them back to that area. Chioki still plugging away, looking to bring respectability to the scoreline, but the uh, Penasta fans in the stand are in fine voice, unsurprisingly. Hope they don't peak too early when they've probably got a long <laughs> night ahead of them. I should think so. They've had an early start as well this morning. The buses were coming in uh, thick and fast uh, around midday. So they've had a few uh, opportunities to uh, to grease the larynx. Yep, a few Malibu and Cherry Aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just uh, picture it. So we're approaching the final 10 minutes, and it's a big ask of uh, Trioki to uh, score three times. But uh, we've seen teams come back from the dead in the final few minutes in games uh, earlier this week. But at a, a lower level, it has to be said. The Panasta would appear to have done enough in the opening 40 minutes to set them on their way to a, a famous win here at the Principality Stadium and they're not done yet they're still full of running and none more so than the uh, the replacement but he's done well to keep the ball alive as indeed has Pritchard up from fullback Ryan Davis takes the ball in to contact there 23 for Panasta that's Elliot to uh, keep crucial ankle tap there by Logan Hutchins they were nearly away Phenomenal work rate to get there and just managed to clip his ankles just in time. When you're looking at the body shapes of these Pilasta players, uh, Chris, and uh, you can tell that uh, they've been hard at it uh, pre-season and during the season to hone their skills and, uh, and get themselves into shape in anticipation of what they hoped would be uh, the final all along. They've scored tries for fun along the way. 
Yeah, I think, you know, they've openly said it's been a big target of this season this year with a, a slightly different kind of playing programme is to get here to Road to Principality was a key driver for them. You could see the style of play that Jack Condy and his coaching group want, that they have to probably be a fit side to play this uh, multi-phase high speed. Their kick chase, everything is probably built around being a fit team to do that. And by comparison with any a number of clubs that have appeared here this week, we've mentioned the fact that they uh, were established back in the 1880s. This is a relative young club, Pinasta, celebrating the 70th anniversary last month. And here they come, oh, the pass not quite sticking, but it's still there, though. Great pickup somewhere around the ankles by uh, Lawrence Pritchard, the fullback. The captain, can he get a second try to round it off before Pinasta? Bid good can't gather. It's an advantage to Penasta. Now they come again. Bid good. He's knocked back in the tackle. Penasta regroup. Five meters, four meters, three meters from the Trioki try line. Sending it out wide to the left. Reaching out, not quite. The arms are in the air. But the referee's assistance flag stays down on the far side and uh, indicates with his right hand that the ball had been knocked forward. Yeah, I think it was that man, Logan Hutchins, again, made a crucial tackle on his opposite number. Superb tackle to keep him out there and a follow-up after that. You know, you mentioned the history win of the, of the clubs. You know, look at Triorki, formed in 1886. What a phenomenal history of that club there based in the Oval. Yeah, I remember the good days back in the mid-90s. Uh, just enjoy the odd uh, the odd visit up uh, to the oval never disappointed great welcome every time and they were hitting the dizzy heights uh, then certainly and uh, the zebra was very prominent uh, all around the ground black and white isn't it fantastic though to see all this support here today in their first final here at the uh, principality stadium yeah they came here full of hope but saw those hopes uh, shattered to all intents and purposes in the opening 40 and uh, Penasta finishing with a flourish here. Just over five minutes remaining. Bid good to Stevens, the captain. That's the uh, replacement uh, prop forward, Kieran Marnie. But away comes Hutchings. He's got support in midfield, but who's back there? Well, would you believe it? It's that lock forward again, Corey Tucker. And now there's a chance for Penasta. And Penasta through will keep. Who scored earlier on, denied again. Uh, three times now uh, Penasta have been denied a score. But it was uh, the scrum half. Nathan Griffiths. That almost uh, stole a march on Penasta with that breakaway. And in consultation here, referee's assistant. Best of luck to those two trying to work that one out. And Kelvin Short in his last game as a, a referee. Big decision. Yeah, we don't have the benefit of uh, action replay, which might have sorted it out. No television match official. Phone a friend, I think, this one. <laughs> well, there's no point in asking the audience, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so the referee's assistant from the far side has come in because he could see possibly plainer than uh, with a pile of bodies in front of the assistant on this side. have a decision scrum scrum down Lewis Stevens is on that scrum half for Penasta wearing number 21 to feed into the scrum five meters out 27 points to 10 that's uh, Penasta's lead
No rush here, is there for Penalta? The the score and the and the time is all on their side. Scrum crabbing somewhat in field. Stevens goes in. No, let's have it in again, says uh, referee Kelvin Short. Not happy. The scrums have been pretty good in fairness. Yeah, they've been excellent, haven't they, all the way through the uh, the whole of the road to Principality. Uh, we've seen scrums as really restarts of games. We haven't seen much uh, shenanigans or resets. It's been really, really impressive. So Kelvin Short having a, a second look at his watch. Couldn't believe that the second half has flown, perhaps. Penalty for Nasta. Scrum collapsed. Going straight down, says uh, the referee to the uh, disbelieving Trioki hooker, who's Robert Jones. We'll take the line out and we'll try and stay down here for the time that remains. That's the uh, decision of Rhys Stevens, the Panasta captain. He's standing in the scrum half position at the moment, the catch and the drive. In goes Kieran Marnie wearing 18. He's got the ball tucked uh, tightly under his arm. Not quite getting there. And has lost the ball forward in contact. Yeah, did well there, Trioki, defensively at that line out. They managed to isolate the carry there, drop them early, split them. Getting the scrum turnover. Got a long way to go to get up the field. Yeah, not just the once, not just twice. The clock is uh, Trioki's worst enemy at the moment. Looks like they're set up to go, they'll win. Looks like they're going to play from here. I could still have some excitement and left in this match. And coming out of the scrum was the Panasta number six, uh, Geraint Cable, just having a quick word with his uh, outside half, Joe Scrivens. Secure in the hands of Nash and Trioki indeed uh, tried to run it. And Elliot Keep almost got his hand to the ball in flight. Good work by Panasta. And that was uh, Lloyd Bodman, the replacement wearing 19. He was in there straight away. In an instant, got his hands on the ball and turned it over. Scrivens sends it out wide to Ryan Davis. Cuts back in on the angle, taken by two uh, Trioki players. Stevens, the captain, looking to open the door there for Corey Tucker. Scrivens, a show of, uh, a show of hand. And still... Trioki to the bitter end. The defence is holding firm here. Penasta on the front foot. And a loud blast in the whistle of Kelvin Short. And the penalty goes uh, Trioki's way. Phenomenal heart in this Trioki defence. They just haven't taken the step backwards all day. They're still throwing themselves into the contact. It's just so difficult when you can't get out of your own 22 at the moment, and it's just relentless for them. Yeah, this corner here has been the coffin corner for Trioki for the last uh, five, ten minutes or so. So trotting on for Penasta, and that's uh, Lewis Rowden. The man in a hurry wearing number 16, 
to get on before the referee blows the final whistle down from the top of the line out immediately into the hands of uh, the outside back so that's the intention but Lewis Barnett keeping his eye on the ball carrier and nailing him to the floor Pritchard up from fullback turns Kieran Mani. That's Bodman. <laughs> Giving chase. That's Ryan Davis again is uh, strolled over from his right wing. Well, risky passes, but it doesn't matter really now from a Panafta perspective because they're still hanging on to that 17-point uh, advantage, spraying the passes this way and to the getting the pass away. Now, this guy deserves a try. He might not get it, but Panafta will. Ryan Davis, it is. He'd wandered across from the right wing. Previously, in the hope of getting onto the score sheet, didn't quite make it then, but was on hand to finish it and to cap a fine performance by Penasta because we can safely say that they've got both hands on the plate and that it'll be gracing the trophy cabinet in Penasta's rugby club before the next 12 months. Yeah, what a try to finish. It's that man again, isn't it? It's Corey Tucker. He's been everywhere. He's, uh, he's had an impressive final. Triorki are out on their feet. They really have thrown everything into this. But uh, they certainly have, and Joe Scribbins has the final word. He sends the con conversion between the posts. And it's, it's been an all-round performance from Penasta. And whatever Triorki tried, they came up short each time. They had their moments, certainly. But it's been Penasta's day, and it certainly will be Penasta's weekend. Yeah, I think Triorki would be super proud of their efforts. Commiserations, but they came up with a very, very good, well-organized team here today. And, um, you know, a fitting winner, really. And all credit must go to uh, not just the uh, the 23 on the field, but also to Gareth Biss for the uh, head coach and uh, Jack Condy as well. Just uh, 27 years of age and making his way in the coaching world. And boy, has he made... Uh, incremental steps and a huge step up this afternoon yeah very impressive you know you can see you can see the imprint of the coaching uh, quality on on both sets of teams really but especially with Penalta and um, yeah they've done it again when they'll have to extend the trophy cabinet in that rugby club yeah it's a proud record isn't it that uh, Penalta have we've already mentioned that this is their eighth visit to the principality in 21 years it's an extraordinary achievement for a, a village club and uh, they were looking for their third plate win in 10 years and now they have it. From 1 to 23. And the celebrations have begun and they're reciprocated in the stand in the middle tier of that uh, East Grandstand. And the youth side is supporting the senior side, and that's always good to see. And their turn will come, no doubt, because they will make the progress that these men uh, have already made over the last few years. 23 of the 25 extended squad, or the 28 extended squad, have come through the junior and the youth ranks. Yeah, it's definitely a blueprint, isn't it, uh, the how to do it? And again, you know, similar with Triorki, you see the amount of homegrown players. Uh, you know, that is the future. They've got strong cultures there, and you can see how much it means uh, across the club. And, um, yeah, I know Penalta, they've got a strong identity. Their famous second team are called the F Troop, with a youth side that's been very successful over the years as well. So, yep. Yeah, the Pittmen have done it here at the Principality Stadium. And it's good to see John Mason there walk onto the pitch and congratulate to Kelvin Short, the referee, on a, on a fine game.
It's uh, it's not easy without the benefit uh, sometimes of uh, a television match official. Yeah, I'd echo that win. I think, you know, Calvin, knowing him, he's done all levels of rugby for many, many years. And what a fitting way, really, if he's going to hang up his whistle and uh, to referee the final here today. And, uh, yeah, thanks for his services and best of luck to him in the future. And those are the freshly minted medals uh, for the uh, the plate winners with a tinge of gold. And the Panatka supporters have commandeered uh, either side of the uh, middle tier of that east stand so that whatever Panasta attack, then they have the support in numbers. Graham Hughes there, the fourth uh, match official, who has given uh, exceptional service to the WIU over the years. So the Triochi players can receive their medals. So yeah. you're familiar with the presentation party, uh, Chris? Yeah, handing out the medals there is Rob Butcher, the WRU chairman. Yeah, it's nice to see the WRU chairman in his shirt, in his shirt sleeves. Committee men usually are in blazers, aren't they? But you, I, <laughs> he won't add any comments, will you, Chris? <laughs> Radio silence to me there. <laughs> Nice to see Dan Matthews there. Dan has been around a number of clubs over the years. Actually coached him in the age grade system. So uh, great to see him here today. So and finally, Jordan Lloyd, the captain, disappointed with the end results, but uh, Tioki can't really complain because they were out thought at times, out muscled even, and outplayed. Yeah, that's a fair reflection. I think uh, I think Andrew Bishop and Ian Greenslade would be the first to admit that. And uh, you know, good honest rugby people. I think sometimes you just come up against better opposition on your day. And uh, Penalty there was certainly that this afternoon. Yeah, Declan Williams, there, strong man at centre, wasn't he? He had a very good game for Penasta this afternoon. They certainly had their moments. There was opportunities where maybe a bit more clinical, a bit more accuracy. They could have got a couple more scores, a couple of intercept opportunities that didn't quite go to hand. But, um, yeah, they did also spend long time uh, defending, and it was it was tough. It was difficult, and their tackle count must have been huge this afternoon. Yeah, the defensive effort from Penasta down uh, this end of the field when Triorki were pressing, they had the opportunities then, couldn't quite uh, convert them, and uh, Penasta broke out and took advantage Ben Griffiths the loose head prop went about his business quietly and efficiently had the odd word with the referee just to draw his attention to uh, what he considered was uh, malpractice on behalf of uh, the Trioki front row and that guy certainly created an impression didn't he number 17 despite playing at hooker Johnny Wright yeah the former outside half finding himself in the middle of that front row. Perhaps he wanted more of the action. Yeah, he liked the open spaces, didn't he? He was an all-court player today. He was, uh, yeah, he pulled a few rabbits out of hats as the game went on. He certainly did. So we're waiting for the plate presentation. There it is. Shined especially for the occasion and up into the air it goes in the hands, safely in the hands of Rhys Stevens, the Penasta captain. And it will signify the fact that Penasta are the uh, national final plate winners here in 2021-2022. And every player gets a chance to get his hand on the silverware. Uh, it's been an excellent performance from Penasta. 
and the tries certainly uh, well worth the effort so let's get behind the the banner for the uh, obligatory photographs congratulations to Panasta the national plate winners for 2021 2022 So the culmination of the uh, Saturday's play here, the national finals. And just to confirm that we've had uh, Tonna winning the national shield finals and Haran the bowl final and now Penasta. And we look ahead to tomorrow and Monday when the uh, women and the girls will have their say. It's the North Wales, South Wales uh, cup and plate finals. Tomorrow, Carnarvon against Cobra, Lampard against Blackwood, Bonamine against Sandaf North. And then on Monday, we'll have the girls under 18s plate final, the girls under 18s national cup final, the girls under 15s national plate final, and the girls under 15s national cup final itself. And we'll be back tomorrow on YouTube and on WR UTV to witness uh, the climax of the senior women's national finals day. But for now, let's congratulate. Panasta on a job well done and a final scoreline of uh, 34 points to 10. And thanks to Chris Auer as well for keeping uh, keeping an eye on me. It wasn't easy at times and uh, with the confusion uh, in the numbers as well. It's, uh, it's not easy, that's for sure. So for now, we bid you uh, farewell and hope to see you tomorrow once more when we'll uh, gather up the cudgels once again.